two households, both alike in dignity, in fair Verona where we lay our scene. From ancient grudge break to new mutiny, where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. From forth the fatal loins of these two foes, a pair of star-crossed lovers take their life, whose misadventured, piteous overthrows do with their death bury their parents' strife. The fearful passage of their death-marked love and the continuance of their parents' rage, which but their children's end naught could remove, is now the two hours' traffic of our stage, the which, if you with patient ears attend, what here shall miss, our toil shall strive to mend. Gregory, on my word, will not carry coals. No, for then we would be colliers. <laughs> I mean, and we be in collar, we'll draw. Aye, while you live, draw your neck out of collar. And I strike quickly, being moved. But thou art not quickly moved to strike. Because of the house of Montague moves me. To move is to stir, and to be valiant is to stand. Therefore, if thou art moved, thou runs away. The dog of that house shall move me to stand. I will take the wall of any man or maid of Montague. That shows thee a weak slave, for the weakest goes to the wall. It is true, <laughs> and therefore women being the weaker vessels are ever thrust to the wall. Therefore, I will push Montague's men from the wall and thrust his maids to the wall. The quarrel is between our masters and us their men. That is all one. I will show myself a tyrant. When I fought with the men, I will be civil with the maids. I will cut off their heads. The heads of the maids? Neither the heads of the maids are they maiden heads. Take it in what sense thou wilt. They must take it in sense that feel it. <laughs> Me they shall feel while I am able to stand. Tis known I'm a pretty piece of flesh. Tis well thou art not fish. If thou had, thou hadst been poor, John. Yeah. <laughs> Draw thy tool. Here comes of the house of Montagues. My naked weapon is out. Quarrel, I will back thee. How? Turn thy back and run. Fear me not. No, marry, I fear thee. Let us take the law of our signs. Let them begin. I will frown as I pass by. Let them take it as they list. Nay, as they dare. I will bite my thumb at them, which is disgrace to them if they bear it. <laughs> do you bite your thumb at us, sir? I do bite my thumb, sir. Do you bite your thumb at us, sir? It is the law of our side if I say I? No. No, sir, I do not bite my thumb at you, sir, but I bite my thumb, sir. Do you quarrel, sir? Quarrel, sir? No, sir. But if you do, sir, I am for you. I serve as good a man as you. No better. Well, sir. Say better. Here comes one of my master's kinsmen. Yes. Better, sir. You lie. Draw if you be men. Ah! Ah! Stand! Thou drawn among these heartless hinds. Ah! Turn thee, Benvolio! Look upon my death. I do but keep the peace. Beef with! <laughs> Put up thy sword! I'll manage it to part these men with me. What? Drawn and talk of peace. I hate the word, as I hate hell. All Montagues. And thee! Have at thee! Coward! <laughs> Make 
familiar subjects, enemies to peace, profaners of this naval stainless steel, will they not hear? But how are you men? Your beasts have quenched the fire of your pernicious rage with purple fountains issuing from your veins. On pain of torture! From those bloody hands, throw your mistempered weapons to the ground and hear the sentence of your morbid prince. Three civil brawls. Bread of an airy word, by thee, old Capulet and Montague have thrice disturbed the quiet of our streets and made Verona's ancient citizens cast by their grave beseeming ornaments to wield old partisans in hands as old, cankered with peace, to part your cankered hate. If ever you disturb our streets again, your lives shall pay the forfeit of the peace. For this time, all the rest depart away. You, Capulet, shall go along with me. And Montague, come you this afternoon to know our further pleasure in this case to Old Free Town, our common judgment place. Once more, on pain of death, all men depart. <laughs> Who set this ancient quarrel? New approach. Speak, nephew. Were you by when it began? Here were the servants of your adversary and yours. Close fighting ere I did approach. I drew to part them. In the instant came the fiery Tybalt with his sword prepared. Ah. Which, as he breathed defiance to my ears, he swung about his head and cut the winds. Who nothing hurt withal, hissed him in scorn. <laughs> While we went to changing thrusts and blows, came more and more, and fought and part and part, till the prince came, who parted either part. Oh, where is Romeo? Saw you him today. Right glad I am he was not at this fray. Madam, an hour before the worshipped sun peered forth the, the golden window of the east, a troubled mind drave me to walk abroad, where underneath the grove of sycamore that westward rooteth from the city side, so early walking did I see your son. Towards him I made, but he was ware of me and stole into the covert of the wood. I, measuring his affections by my own, which then most sought where most might not be found, being one too many by my weary self, pursued my humour, not pursuing his, and gladly shunned who gladly fled from me. Many a morning hath he there been seen, with tears augmenting the fresh morning's dew adding to clouds more clouds with his deep sighs. But all so soon as the old cheering sun should in the farthest east begin to draw the shady curtains from Aurora's bed, away from light steals home my heavy sun, and private in his chamber pens himself, shuts up his windows, locks fair daylight out and makes himself an artificial night. Black and portentous must this humour prove, Unless good counsel may the cause remove. My noble uncle, do you know the cause? I neither know it nor can learn from him. Have you importuned him by any means? Both by myself and many other friends. But he, his own affections counsellor, is to himself, I will not say how true, but to himself so secret and so close, so far from sounding and discovery, as is the bud bit with an envious worm, ere he can spread his sweet leaves to the air or dedicate his beauty to the sun. Could we but learn from whence his sorrows grow, we would as willingly give cure as no. See where he comes. So please you step aside. I, I know his grievance will be much denied. I would thou wert so happy by thy stay to hear true shrift. Come, madam, let's away. Good morrow, cousin. Is the day so young? But new struck nine. Ay, me sad hours seem long. Was that my father that went hence so fast? It was. What sadness lengthens Romeo's hours? <laughs> Not having that which having makes them short. In love? Out. Of love? Out of her favour when I am in love. 
Alas, that love so gentle and as view should be so tyrannous and rough and proof. <laughs> Alas, that love whose view is muffled still should without eyes see pathways to his will. Where shall we dine? Tell me what Frey was here. Yet tell me not, for I have heard it all. He has much to do with hate, but more with love. Why then, O oh, brawling love, O oh, loving hate, O oh, anything of nothing first create, O oh, heavy lightness, serious vanity, misshapen chaos of well-seeming forms, feather of lead, bright smoke, cold fire, still waking sleep, that is not what it is. This love feel I that feel no love in this. <laughs> Does thou not laugh? No, cuz. I rather weep. Good heart, at what? At thy good heart's oppression. Why such is love's transgression? Griefs of mine own lie heavy in my breast, which thou wilt propagate to have it pressed with more of thine. This love that thou hast shown doth add more grief to too much of mine own. Love is a smoke made with a fume of sighs, being purged of fire, sparkling in lover's eyes. Being vexed, a sea nourished with lover's tears. What is it else? A madness most discreet, a choking gall and a preserving sweet. Farewell, my cuz. Soft, I will go along. And if you leave me so, you do me wrong. Tut, I have left myself. I am not here. This is not Romeo. He's some other where. Tell me, in sadness. Who is that you love? What shall I groan and tell thee? Groan? Why no, but certainly tell me who. Bid a sick man in sadness make his will, a word ill urged to one that is so ill. In sadness, cousin, I do love a woman. I aim so near when I supposed you love. A right good mark, then. and she's fair, I love. A right fair mark, fair cuz, is soonest hit. Well, in that hit you miss. She'll not be hit with Cupid's arrow. She hath Diane's wit. And in strong proof of chastity, well armed from love's weak childish bow, she lives uncharmed. She will not stay the siege of loving terms, nor bide the encounter of her sailing eyes, nor ope her lap to saint seducing gold. Oh, she is rich in beauty, only poor, but when she dies, with beauty dies her store. And she hath sworn that she will still live chaste. She hath, and in that sparing makes huge waste. For beauty starved with her severity cuts beauty off from all posterity. She is too fair, too wise, wisely too fair to merit bliss by making me despair. She hath forsworn to love, and in that vow do I live dead that live to tell it now. Be ruled by me. Forget to think of her. No, teach me how I should forget to think. By giving liberty unto thine eyes, examine other beauties. Tis the way to call hers exquisite in question more. These happy masks that kiss fair ladies' brows, being black, puts us in mind they hide the fair. He that is struck and blind cannot forget the precious treasure of his eyesight lost. Show me a mistress that is passing fair. What hath her beauty served but as a note wherein I may read who passed that passing fair? Farewell, thou canst not teach me to forget. I'll pay that doctrine or else die in debt. But Montague is bound as well as I, in penalty alike. And tis not hard, I think, for men so old as we to keep peace. Of honourable reckoning are you both. And pity tis you lived at odds so long. But now, my lord, what say you to my suit? But saying o'er what I've said before, my child is yet a stranger to the world. She hath not seen the change of fourteen years. Let two more summers wither in their pride, ere we may think her ripe to be a bride. Younger than she a happy mother's maid. And too soon marred are those so early made. Earth hath swallowed all my hopes, but she, she is the hopeful lady of my earth. But woo her, gentle Paris, get her heart. My will to her consent is but a part, and she agreed within her scope of choice lies my consent and fair according voice. This night I hold an old accustomed feast whereto I've invited many a guest such as I love. And you among the store, one more, most welcome, makes my number more. 
At my poor house, look to behold this night earth-treading stars that make dark heaven light. Such comfort as do lusty young men feel when well-appareled April on the heel of limping winter treads. Even such delight among fresh female buds shall you this night inherit at my house. Hear all, all see, and like her most, whose merit most shall be, which on more view of many, mine being one, may stand in number, though it reckoning none. Come, go with me. Go, sir, trudge about through fair Verona, find those persons out whose names are written there, and to them say, my house and welcome on their pleasure stay. Come. Find them out whose names are written here. It is written that the shoemaker should meddle with his yard, and the tailor with his last, the fisher with his pencil, and the painter with his nets. But I am sent to find those persons whose names are writ here, and can ever find what names the writing person here hath writ. I must to the learned, in good time. Hmm. Tut, man! One fire burns out, another's burning. One pain is lessened with another's anguish. Turn giddy and behold by backward turning. One desperate grief cures with another's languish. Take thou some new infection to thy eye, and the rank poison of the old will die. Your plantain leaf is excellent for that. For what, I pray thee? For your broken shin! Oh, why, we are no mad! Not mad, but bound more than a madman is. Shut up in prison, kept without my food, whipped and tormented and... Good in, good fellow. God gee, good in. Oh, I pray, sir, can you read? I, mine own fortune and my misery. Perhaps you've learned it without book. <laughs> but I pray, can you read anything you see? I, if I know the letters and the language. You say honestly. Resty merry. <laughs> Stay, fellow, I can read. Oh. Senior Martino and his wife and daughters. County Anselm and his beauteous sisters. The lady widow of Vitruvio. Signor Placentio and his lovely nieces, Mercutio and his brother Valentine, my uncle Capulet, his wife and daughters, my fair niece Rosaline, and Livia, Livia. Signor Valencio and his cousin Tybalt, Lucio and the lively mm. Helena. A fair assembly. Whither should they come? Up. Whither? To supper. To our house. Whose house? My master's. Indeed, I should have asked thee that before. <laughs> now I'll tell you without asking. My master is the great rich Capulet. And if you're not be at the house of Montague, I pray, come and crush a cup of wine. <laughs> Resty merry. <laughs> <laughs> at this same ancient feast of Capulet, sups the fair Rosaline, whom thou so loves, with all the admiring beauties of Verona. Go thither, and with unattainted eye, compare her face with some that I shall show, and I will make thee think thy swan a crow. When the devout religion of mine eye maintains such falsehood, oh. then turn tears to fires, and these who often drown can never die, transparent heretics, be burnt for liars, one fairer than my love. The all-seeing sun ne'er saw her match since first the world begun. Chat, you saw her fair and else being by, herself poised with herself in either eye. But in that crystal scales, let there be weighed your lady's love against some other maid that I shall show you shining at this feast. And she shall scant show well that now seems best. I'll go along. Ah. No such sight to be shown, but to rejoice in splendor of mine own. Mm. Nurse, where is my daughter? Call her forth to me. Now, by my maidenhead at twelve year old, I bade her come. What lamb? What ladybird? God forbid. Where's this girl? What Juliet? Oh, no, who called? Your mother. Madam, I'm here. What is your will? This is the matter. Nurse, give leave a while. We must talk in secret. Oh, nurse, come back again. I have remembered me thus here, our counsel. Thou knowest my daughter's of a pretty age. Faith, I can tell her age into an hour. She's not yet fourteen. I'll lay fourteen of my teeth. 
It's my teen bit spoken of, but four. She's not fourteen. How long is it now to Lammas time? Oh, a fortnight and odd days. Even or odd. Of all days in the year, come Lammas Eve at night, till she be fourteen. Susan and she, God rest all Christian souls, were of an age. Well, Susan is with God. She was too good for me. But as I said, on Lammas Eve at night, shall she be fourteen. That shall she. Mary, I remember it well. Tis since the earthquake now eleven years, and she was weaned. I never shall forget it, of all the days of the year, upon that day. For I then laid Wormwood to my dug, sitting in the sun under the dove house wall. My lord and you within a mantua. Nay, I do bear a brain. Yet, but as I'll say, when to taste the Wormwood on the nipple of my dug, and felt it bitter, pretty fool to see it tetchy and fall out with the dug. Shake, quoth the dove house. Tis no need I trow to bid me trudge. And since that time, it is eleven years. For then she could stand high alone. <laughs> Nay, by the rood, she could have run and waddled all about. For even the day before, she broke her brow. And then my husband, copy with his soul, was a merry man, took up the child. Yea, quoth he, does thou fall upon my face? Thou will fall backward when thou hast more wit, wilt thou not, Jewel? And by my holly, Dan, the pretty wretch left crying and said, I. <laughs> you see now how a jest shall come about. I warrant I shall live a thousand years. I never should forget it. Will thou not, Jewel? Quoth he. A pretty fool. He stinted and said, I. Oh, and laugh at this, I pray thee, hold thy peace. Yes, madam. Yet I cannot choose but laugh. To think it should leave crying and say, I. It, I warrant, it had upon it brow a bump as big as a young cockerel's stone. A parlous knock. And he cried bitterly. <laughs> Yea, quoth my husband, falls upon my face. Thou fall backward when thou comes to age, wilt thou not, too? <laughs> and it stinted and said, I. Tis so, too. I pray thee, no, say I. Peace I have done. God mark thee to his grace. That was the prettiest babe that e'er I nursed. And I might live to see thee married once. I have my wish. Marry that marry is the very theme I came to talk of. Tell me, Dr. Juliet, how stands your disposition to be married? It is an honor that I dream not of. An honor? Were not I thine only nurse, I would say thou hast sucked wisdom from thy teeth. Well, think of marriage now. Younger than you here in Verona, ladies of esteem are made already mothers. By my count, I was your mother. Much upon these years that you are now amazed. Thus then, in brief, the valiant Paris seeks you for his love. A man, young lady. Lady, such a man as all the world. Why, he's a man of wax. Verona's summer has not such a flower. Nay, he's a flower. In faith, a very flower. What say you? Can you love the gentleman? This night you shall behold him at our feast. Read all the volume of young Paris' face and find delight writ there with beauty's pen. Examine every married lineament and see how one another lends contempt. And what obscured in this fair volume lies, find written in the margins of his eyes. This precious book of love, this unbound lover, to beautify him only lacks a cover. The fish lives in the sea, and is much pride for fair without the fair within to hide. That book in many's eyes does share the glory that in gold clasps locks in the golden story. So shall you share all that he doth possess by having him making yourself no less. No less, nay, bigger. Women grow by men. Speak briefly. Can you like of Paris love? I look to like if looking liking move. But no more deep will I endart mine eye than your consent gives strength to make it fly. <laughs> uh, madam, the guests are come. Supper served up, you call, my young lady asked for, the nurse cursed in the pantry, and everything in extremity. I must hence to wait. I beseech you, follow straight. We follow thee. Juliet, the county stays. Oh, girl, seek happy nights to happy days. <laughs>
What shall this speech be spoken to our excuse, or shall we on without apology? The date is out of such prolixity. We'll have no Cupid for group with a scarf bearing a tartar's painted bow of larks scaring the ladies like a crowkeeper. Nor no without book prologue faintly spoke off the prompter for our entrance. Right. Let them measure us with what they will. We'll measure them a measure and be gone. Give me a torch. I am not for this ambling. Bring but heavy, I will bear the light. Hey, gentle Romeo, we must have you dance. Not I, believe me. You have dancing shoes with nimble soles. I have a soul of lead so stakes me to the ground I cannot move. For your lover, borrow Cupid's wings and soar with them above the common bird. I'm too sore and piercing with his shaft to soar with his light feathers. And so bowed, I cannot bow to pitch above dull woe. Under love's heavy burden do I sink. And to sink in it, should you burden love, too great oppression for a tender thing. Is love a tender thing? It is too rough, too rude, too boisterous. And it pricks like thorn. Well, if love be rough with you, be rough with love. Prick love for pricking, and you beat love down. <laughs> Give me a case to put my visage in. A visor for a visor. What care I what curious eyes doth quote deformities here the beetle brows shall flush to me. Oh, <laughs> not gonna enter. And no sooner end. And every man will take him to his legs. A torch from me. Let wantons, light of heart, tickle the senseless rushes with their heels. For I am proverb with a grandsire phrase. I'll be a candle holder and look on. The game was ne'er so fair, and I am done. Tut, done's the mouse, the constable's own word. If thou art done, then we will draw thee from the mire of, uh, save your reverence, love, wherein thou stickest up to the ears. Come, we burn daylight home. Nay, that's not so. I mean, sir, in delay, we waste our lights in vain as lamps by day. Take our good meaning, for our judgment sits five times in that ere once in our five wits. And we mean well in going to this mask, but tis no wit to go. Why, may one ask? I dreamt a dream tonight. <laughs> and so did I. Well, what was yours? That dreamers often lie. They'd better sleep while they do dream things true. Ah, then I see Queen Mab hath been with you. She is the fairy's midwife. And she comes in shape no bigger than an agate stone on the forefinger of an alderman. <laughs> Drawn with a team of little atomies over men's noses as they lie asleep. Her chariot is an empty hazelnut, made by the joiner squirrel or old grub. Time out of mind, the fairy's coachmakers. Her wagon spokes made of long spinner's legs, her cover of the wings of grasshoppers, her traces of the smallest spider's web, her collars of the moonshine's watery beam, her whip of cricket bone, the lash of film, her wagoner, a small grey-coated gnat, not half as big as the round little worm, pricked from the lazy finger of her maid. And in this state, she gallops night by night through lovers' brains, <laughs> and then they dream of love. Or court his knees, who dream on curtsies straight, or a lawyer's fingers, who straight dream on fears. Or a lady's lips, who straight on kisses dream, which oft the angry mab with blisters plagues, because their breaths with sweetmeats tainted are. <laughs> Sometimes she gallops o'er a courtier's nose, then dreams he is smelling out a suit. And sometimes comes she with a tithe pig's tail, tickling a parson's nose as he lies asleep, then dreams he of another benefice. And sometimes she driveth o'er a soldier's neck. Then dreams he of cutting foreign throats, of breeches, ambuscados, Spanish blades, of healths five fathom deep. And then anon, drums in his ear, for she starts and wakes. Being thus frighted, swears a prayer or two and sleeps again. Now this is that very man that flats the manes of horses in the night, bakes the elf flocks in foul sluttish hairs, which once untangled must misfortune bows. This is the hag when maids lie on their back that presses them and learns them first to bear, making them women of good carriage. This is she. Peace, peace. Mercutio, peace. Thou talkest of nothing. True. I talk of dreams, which are the children of an idle brain. We got of nothing but vain fantasy. Tis as thin of substance as the air, and more inconstant than the wind who woos even now the frozen bosom of the north, and being angered, puffs away from thence, turning his side on the dew dropping south. This wind you talk of blows us from ourselves. Supper is done, and we shall come too late. I fear too early. 
for my mind misgives some consequence, yet hanging in the stars shall bitterly begin his fearful date with this night's revels, and expire the term of a despised life closed in my breast with some vile forfeit of untimely death. But he that hath the steerage of my course, direct my sail. On, lusty gentlemen! Strike drum! Where's Potpan that he helps not to take away? He shift a trencher. He scrape a trencher. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and good manners shall lie all in one or two men's hands, and they are washed too. Oh, tis a foul thing. Yeah. <laughs> Away with the joint stools, remove the cork cupboard, look to the plate. Good thou. Save me a piece of march pain, and as thou loves me, let the porter let in Susan Grindstone and Nell. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony and Puckpan. Aye, boy. Ready. You are looked for and called for, asked for and sought for in the great chamber. Ha! Cannot be here and there too. Surely, boys, be brisk a while, and the longer liver take all. And plagued with corns will walk about with you. <laughs> <laughs> ah, my mistresses, which of you all will now deny to dance? She that makes dainty, she, I swear, hath corns. <laughs> Am I come near you now? Welcome, gentlemen. I have seen the day that I have worn a visor and could tell a whispering tale in a fair lady's ear such as would please. <laughs> but tis gone. Tis gone. Tis gone. You are welcome, gentlemen. Come, musicians, play. A hall, a hall. Give room and put it, girls. More lights, you name, and turn the tables up and quench the fire. The room is grown too hot. Ah, sinner, this unlooked for sport comes well. <laughs> Nay, sit, they sit, good cousin Captain. For you and I are past our dancing days. <laughs> How long is now since last yourself and I were in a mask? Are your lady thirty years? What mad? Tis not so much, tis not so much. Tis since the nuptial of Lucentio come Pentecost as quickly as it will. Oh, some five and twenty years, and then we masked. Tis more, tis more. His son is older, sir. His son is thirty. Will you tell me that? His son was but a ward two years ago. <laughs> Is that which doth enrich the hand of yonder knight? I know not, sir. Oh, she doth teach the torches to burn bright. 
It seems she hangs upon the cheek of night as a rich jewel in an Ethiop's ear. Beauty too rich for use, for earth too dear. So shows a snowy dove trooping with crows as yonder lady o'er her fellow shows. The measure done, I'll watch her place of stand, and touching hers make blessed my rude hand. Did my heart love till now? For swear its sight, for I ne'er saw true beauty till this night. This by his voice should be a Montague. Fetch me my rapier, boy. There is a slave come hither covered with an antique face to fleer and scorn at our solemnity. Now, by the stock and honor of my kin, to strike him dead, I hold it not a sin. And our kinsman, wherefore stole me, sir? Uncle, this is a Montague, our foe, a villain that is hither come in spite to scorn at our solemnity this night. Young Romeo, is it? Tis he, that villain Romeo. Content thee, gentle cuz, let him alone. He bears him like a portly gentleman, and to say truth, Verona brags of him to be a virtuous and well-governed youth. I would not for the wealth of all this town here in my house do him disparagement. Therefore, be patient. Take no note of him. It is my will, to which if thou respect, show her respect. And throw off this frown, and he'll be seeming semblance for a feast. It fits when such a villain as a guest. I'll not endure he him. He shall be endured. What goodman boy, I say he shall go to. Am I the master here, or you go to? You'll not endure him. God shall mend my soul. You'll make a mutiny among my guests. You'll set cock a -hoop. You'll be the man. My uncle, there's a show. Go to, go to. You are a saucy boy. This so indeed. Uh, this trick may chance to scave you. I know what. Now it is time. Well said, my hearts. You're a precox. Go. Be but quiet, Orb. More light, more light. Shame, make you quiet. God kill my heart. Patience perforce with willful collar meeting makes my flesh tremble in their different greeting. I will withdraw. But this intrusion shall now seeming sweet convert to bitterest gall. If I profane with my unworthiest hand this holy shrine, what a gentle sin is this. My lips two blushing pilgrims ready stand to smooth that rough touch with a tender kiss. Good pilgrim, you do wrong your hand too much, which mannerly devotion shows in this. For saints have hands that pilgrims' hands do touch, and palm to palm is holy palmers' kiss. Have not saints lips and holy palmers too? Aye, pilgrim, lips that they do use in prayer. Oh, then, dear saint, let lips do what hands do they pray. Grant thou lest faith turn to despair. Saints do not move, though grant for prayer's sake. Move not while my prayer's effect I take. Thus from my lips by thine my sin is purged. Then of my lips the sin that they have took. Sin from my lips? O oh, trespass sweetly urged, give me my sin again. Your mother craves a word with you. What is her mother? Mary Batchel, her mother's the lady of the house. And a good lady, and wise and virtuous. I know to her daughter that you talk with all. I'll tell you. He that can lay hold of her shall have the chinks. Is she a Capulet? Oh, dear account, my life is my foe's debt. We be gone, which boat is at his best. Aye, so I fear, the more is my unrest. <laughs> Nay, gentlemen, prepare not to be gone. We have a trifling foolish banquet toward. <laughs> it is so. Why, then, I thank you all. I thank you, honest gentlemen. Good night. More torches, ho. Come on, then. Let's to bed. Ah, Sarah, by my fay, it waxes late. I'll to my rest. Come 
be the nurse. What is yon gentleman? The son and heir of old Tiberius. What's he that now is going out of door? Marry that, I think, be young Petruchio. What's he that follows here that would not dance? I know not. Go ask his name. If he be married, my grave is like to be my wedding bed. His name is Romeo and a Montague, the only son of your great enemy. My only love sprung from my only hate. Too early seen unknown and known too late. Prodigious birth of love it is to me that I must love a loathed enemy. What's this? What's this? A rhyme I learnt even now, of one I danced with all. Yeah. Anon, anon! Come, let's away. The strangers all are gone. Now old desire doth in his deathbed lie, and young affection gapes to be his heir. That fair for which love groaned for and would die, with tender Juliet matched, is now not fair. Now Romeo is beloved and loves again, alike bewitched by the charm of looks. But to his foe supposed he must complain, and she steals love's sweet bait from fearful hooks. Being held a foe, he may not have access to breathe such vows as lovers used to swear, and she, as much in love, her means much less to meet her new beloved anywhere. But passion lends them power, time means to meet, tempering extremities with extreme sweet. <laughs> Can I go forward when my heart is here? Turn back, dull earth, and find thy center out. Romeo! My cousin, Romeo! Romeo! He's wise, and on my life hath stolen him home to bed. He ran this way and left the orchard wall. Cold, good Mercutio. Oh, nay, I'll conjure too. Romeo! Humours, madman, passion, lover. <laughs> now appear thou in the likeness of a sigh. Speak but one rhyme and I am satisfied. Cry but I me, pronounce but love and dove. Speak to my gossip Venus one fair word, one nickname for her purblind son and heir, young Abram Cupid. To he that shot so trim when King Capetua loved the beggar maid. Ah, he heareth not, he stirreth not, he moveth not. The ape is dead, and I must conjure him. <laughs> oh, I conjure thee by Rosalind's bright eye, by her high forehead and her scarlet lip, by her fine foot, straight leg, and quivering thigh, oh. and, the, and the demeans that there adjacent lie, that in thy likeness thou appear to us. <laughs> <laughs> and if he hear thee, thou wilt anger him. Now, this cannot anger him. To anger him to raise a spirit in his mistress' circle of some strange nature, letting it there stand till she had laid it and conjured it down. That was some spite. My invocation is but fair and honest. In his mistress' name, I <laughs> conjure only but to raise up him. Come. He hath hid himself among the trees to be consorted with the humorous knight. Blind is his love, and best befits the dark. <laughs> if love be blind, love cannot hit the mark. <laughs> now will he sit under a meddler tree and wish his mistress were that kind of fruit that maids call meddlers when they laugh alone. Oh, Romeo, that she were. Oh, that she were an open ass, <laughs> and thou a poppering pear. <laughs> Romeo, good night. I'll to my truckle bed. This field bed is too cold for me to sleep. Come, shall we go? Go, then. For tis in vain to seek him here that means not to be found. <laughs> he jests at scars that never felt a wound. So, what like three on the window breaks? <sighs> it is. 
is the east, and Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon, who is already sick and pale with grief that thou, her maid, art far more fair than she. Be not her maid, since she is envious. Her vest livery is but sick and green, and none but fools do wear it. Cast it off. It is my lady. Oh, it is my love. Oh, that you knew she were. She speaks, yet she says nothing. What of that her eye discourses? I will answer it. <laughs> I am too bold as not to me she speaks. Two of the fairest stars in all the heaven, having some business to entreat her eyes to twinkle in their spheres till they return. What if her eyes were there, they in her head? The brightness of her cheek would shame those stars as daylight doth a lamp. Her eyes in heaven would through the airy region stream so bright that birds would sing and think it were not night. See how she leans her cheek upon her hand. Oh, that I were a glove upon that hand that I might touch that cheek. Ah, me. She speaks. Oh, speak again, bright angel, for thou art as glorious to this night being o'er my head as is a winged messenger of heaven unto the white, upturned, wondering eyes of mortals that fall back to gaze on him when he bestrides the lazy, puffing clouds and sails upon the bosom of the air. Oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name, or if thou wilt not, be but sworn my love, and I'll no longer be a Capulet. Shall I hear more? Shall I speak of this? It's but thy name that is my enemy. Thou art thyself. Though not a Montague, what's Montague is no hand, no foot, no arm, no face, no any other part belonging to a man who be some other name. What's in a name? That which we call a rose, by any other word, would smell as sweet. So Romeo would, were he not Romeo called, retain that dear perfume which he owes without that title. Romeo, doff thy name, and for thy name, which is no part of thee, take all myself. I take thee at thy word. Call me but love, and I'll be new baptized. Henceforth I never will be Romeo. What man art thou that thus bescreened in night, so stumblest in my counsel? By a name I know not how to tell thee who I am. My name, dear saint, is hateful to myself because it is an enemy to thee. Had I it written, I would tear the word. Mine ears have not yet drunk a hundred words of thy tongue's uttering, yet I know the sound. Art thou not Romeo and a Montague? Neither, fair maid, if either thee dislike. How camest thou hither? Tell me, and wherefore? The orchard walls are high and hard to climb. And the place death, considering who thou art, if any of my kinsmen find thee here. With love's light wings did I approach these walls, for stony limits cannot hold love out, and what love can do, that dares love attempt. Therefore thy kinsmen are no stop to me. If they do see thee, they will murder thee. Alack, there lies more peril in thine eye than twenty of their swords. Look thou but sweet, and I am proof against their enmity. I would not for the world they saw thee here. I have night's cloak to hide me from their eyes. And but thou love me, let them find me here. My life were better ended by their hate than death prorogued wanting of thy love. By whose direction fondst thou of this place? By love that first did prompt me to inquire. He lent me counsel and I lent him eyes. I am no pilot. Yet wert thou as far as that vast shore washed with the farthest sea I should adventure for such merchandise. Thou knowest the mask of night is on my face, else would a maiden blush repaint my cheek for that which thou hast heard me speak tonight. Fain would I dwell in form, fain, fain deny what I have spoke, but farewell compliment. 
Dost thou love me? <gasps> I know thou wilt say I, and I will take thy word. Yet if thou swearest, thou mayest prove false. But love is perjury, as they say, Jove laughs. Oh. oh, gentle Romeo, if thou dost love, pronounce it faithfully. <sighs> or if thou think'st I am too quickly won, I'll frown and be perverse and say thee nay, so thou wilt woo. But else not for the world. In truth, fair Montague, I am too fond, and therefore thou mayest think my haviour light. But trust me, gentlemen, I'll prove more true than those have more cunning to be strange. I should have been more strange, I must confess, but that thou overheardst I was where my true love passion. Therefore pardon me, and not impute this yielding to light love, which the dark night hath so discovered. Lady, by yonder blessed moon I vow that tips with silver all these fruit tree tops. Oh, swear not by the moon, the inconstant moon that monthly changes in her circled orb, lest that thy love prove likewise variable. What shall I swear by? Well, do not swear. Or if thou wilt, swear by thy gracious self, which is the god of my idolatry, and I believe thee. If my heart's dear love... No, well, do not swear. Although I joy in thee, I have no joy in this contract tonight. It is too rash, too unadvised, too sudden. Too like the lightning which doth cease to be ere one can say it lightens. Sweet good night. This bud of love by summer's ripening breath may prove a beauteous flower when next we meet. Good night. Good night. A sweet repose and rest come to thy heart as that within my breast. Oh, wilt thou leave me so unsatisfied? What satisfaction canst thou have tonight? The exchange of thy love's faithful vow for mine. I gave thee mine before thou didst request it. And yet I would it were to give again. Wouldst thou withdraw it? For what purpose, love? But to be frank, and give it thee again. <laughs> and yet I wish but for the thing I have. My bounty is as boundless as the sea. My love is deep. The more I give to thee, the more I have, for both are infinite. Ooh. I hear some noise within, dear love, adieu. Ooh. Anon, good nurse. Sweet Montague, be true. Uh, stay but a little, I will come again. Oh, blessed, blessed night. I am afeard being in night, all this is but a dream. Too flattering sweet to be substantial. Three words, dear Romeo, and good night indeed. If that thy bent of love be honourable, thy purpose marriage, Send me word tomorrow, by one that I'll procure to come to thee, where and what time thou wilt perform the rite. And all my fortunes at thy foot I'll lay and follow thee, my lord, throughout the world. Uh, I come anon, but if thou meanst not well, I do beseech thee. Uh, by and by I come to cease thy strife and leave me to my grief. Tomorrow will I send? So thrive my soul. A thousand times, good night. A thousand times the worse to want thy light. Love goes towards love as schoolboys from their books. But love from love towards school with heavy looks. Is hoarse and may not speak aloud, else would I tear the cave where echo lies and make her airy tongue more hoarse than mine with repetition of my Romeo. It is my soul that calls upon my name. How silver sweet sound lovers' tongues by night, like softest music to attending ears. Romeo. My yes. Tomorrow shall I send to thee? By the hour of nine. I will not fail. 
Tis twenty years till then. I forgot why I did call you back. Let me stand here till I remember it. I shall forget to have thee still stand there, remembering how I love thy company. And I'll still stay to have thee still forget, forgetting any other home but this. It is almost morning I would have thee gone, and yet no farther than a wanton's bird that lets it hop a little from his hand like a poor prisoner in his twisted jives and with a silken thread plucks it back again. So loving, jealous of his liberty. I would I were thy bird. <laughs> Sweet, so would I. Yet I should kill thee with much cherishing. Good night. Good night. Parting is such sweet sorrow that I shall say good night till it be morrow. Sleep dwell upon thine eyes, peace in thy breast. Would I were sleep and peace so sweet to rest? The grey-eyed morn smiles on the frowning night, checkering the eastern clouds with streaks of light. And darkness fleckled like a drunkard reels from fourth day's pathway made by Titan's wheels. Hence will I to my ghostly friar's close cell, his help to crave and my dear hap to tell. Now, ere the sun advance his burning eye, the day to cheer and night's dank dew to dry, I must have filled this osier cage of ours with baleful weeds and precious juicid flowers. Now, the earth, that's nature's mother, is her tomb. And what is her burying grave? That is her womb. And from her womb, children of diverse kinds, we sucking on her natural bosom fine. Many for many virtues excellent, none but for some, and yet all different. Oh, mickle is the powerful grace that lies in plants, herbs, stones, and their true qualities. For not so vile that on the earth doth live, but to the earth some special good doth give nor aught so good, but strain from that fair use, revolts from true birth, stumbling on abuse. Virtue itself turns vice, being misapplied, and vice, sometimes by action, dignified. Within the infant rind of this weak flower, Poison hath residence and medicine power. For well, this being smelt, with that part cheers each part. Being tasted, stays all senses with the heart. Two such opposed kings encamp them still in man, as well as herbs, grace, and rude will. And where the worse is predominant, full soon the canker death eats up that plant. Goodbye, brother! Benedicity, what early tongue so sweet saluteth me? Young son, it argues a distempered head so soon to bid good morrow to thy bed. Care keeps his watch in every old man's eye, and where care lodges sleep will never lie. But where unbruised youth with unstuffed brain doth couch his limbs, their golden sleep doth reign. Therefore thy earliness doth be assured thou art uprised to some distemperature. <laughs> or if not so, then here I hit it right. Our Romeo hath not been in bed tonight. The last is true, the sweeter rest was mine. God pardon sin, was thou with Rosaline? <laughs> Rosaline, my ghostly father, no, I have forgot that name and that name's woe. That's my good son, but where hast thou been then? 
I'll tell thee ere thou ask it me again. I have been feasting with mine enemy, where on a sudden one hath wounded me that's by me wounded. Both thy remedies within thy help and holy physic lies. I bear no hatred, blessed man, for lo, my intercession likewise steads my foe. Be plain, good son, and homely in thy drift. Riddling confession finds but riddling shrift. <laughs> then plainly know my heart's dear love is set on the fair daughter of rich Capulet. As mine on hers, so hers is set on mine, and both combined. Save what thou must combine by holy marriage. When and where and how we met, we wooed and made exchange of vow, tell thee as we pass. But this I pray, that thou consent to marry us today. Holy oh, St. Francis, what a change is here! Is Rosaline, whom thou didst love so dear, so soon forsaken? Young men's love, then, lies not truly in their hearts, but in their eyes. Gee, Shiveria, what a deal of brine hath washed thy sallow cheeks for Rosaline! How much salt water thrown away in waste? To season love that of it does not taste, the sun not yet thy sighs from heaven clears. Thy old groans yet ring in mine ancient ears, though here upon thy cheek the stain doth sit of an old tear that is not washed off yet. If e'er thou wast thyself and these woes thine, thou and these woes were all for Rosaline, and art thou changed, pronounce this sentence then. Women may fall when there's no strength in men. Thou chiss me oft for loving, Rosaline. For doting, not for loving people, mind. And bats me bury love. Not in a grave to lay one in, another out to have. I pray thee, chide me not. Her I love now, who doth grace for grace and love for love allow. The other did not so. Oh, she knew well thou loved it read by ropes that could not spell. But come, young waverer, come go with me. In one respect I'll thy assistant be. For this alliance may so happy prove to turn your household's rancor to pure love. Oh, let us hence! I stand on sudden haste! Wisely and slow, they stumble that run fast. <laughs> <laughs> Where the devil should this Romeo be? Came he not home tonight? Not to his father's. I spoke with his man. Mm. Uh, that same pale, hard-hearted wench, that Rosaline torments him so that it will sure run mad. Tybalt, the kinsman to old Capulet, hath sent a letter to his father's house. A well, challenge on my life. Romeo will answer it. Any man that can write may answer a letter. Nay, he will answer the letter's master, how he dares being dead. Mm, alas, poor Romeo, he's already dead. Stabbed with a white wench's black eye, run through the ear with a love song. The very pin of his heart cleft by the blind bow boy's butt shaft. And is he a man to encounter Tybalt? Why, what is Tybalt? More than Prince of Cats, I can tell you. Oh, he's a courageous captain of compliments. He fights! As you sing, Prick Song keeps time, distance, and proportion. He rests, his minion rests, one, two, a third in your bosom. The very butcher of a silk button. A duelist, a duelist. The gentleman of the very first house of the first and second court. Uh, the immortal Passado, the Punto Reverso, the High. The what? The Pox. On such antic, lisping, affecting fantasticos, these new tuners of accent. By Jesus, a very good blade, a very tall man, a very good whore. Yeah. Why, is this not a lamentable thing, grandsire? That we should be thus afflicted by these strange flies, these fashion mongers, these pardon me's who stand so much upon the new form they cannot sit at ease on the old bench. Oh, their bones, their <laughs> bones. Ah. Here comes Romeo. Here comes Romeo. Ah, oh. without his row like a dried herring. Oh, flesh, flesh, mm. how art thou fishified? <laughs> now is he for the numbers that Petrarch flowed in. Laura to his lady was a kitchen wench. Mary she had a better love to berhyme her. Dido, a dowdy, Cleopatra, a gypsy, Helen, hero, Hildings and harlots. This be a grey eye also, but that's not to the purpose. Signor Romeo, bonjour. <laughs> There's a French salutation for your French slop. You gave us the counterfeit fairly last night. Good morning to you both. What counterfeit did I give you? The slip, sir. The slip. Can Pardon. you not conceive? Pardon, good Mercutio. My business was great. And in such a case as mine, a man may strain courtesy. That's as much as to say such a case of yours constrains a man to bow in the hand. Meaning to curtsy? Thou well, hast most kindly hit it. A most courteous exposition. Nay, I am the very pink of courtesy. Big for flower? Right. Why, then, is my pump well flowered? Oh, oh, oh. sure wit. Follow me this jest now till thou hast worn out thy pump, that when the single soul of it is worn, the jest may remain after the wearing solely singular. Oh, single soul jest, solely singular for the singleness. <laughs> <laughs> Come between us, good Benvolio, my wits faint. Switz and spurs, switz and spurs, or I'll cry a match. Nay, if our wits to it were to run the wild goose chase, I am done. 
But thou hast more of the wild goose in one of thy wits than I have him, I am sure, in my whole five. Was I with you there for the goose? I was never with me for anything when I was not there for the goose! Oh! I'll bite you by the ear for Yeah, good goose, bite not! Ah, oh, thy wit is a very bitter sweeting. It is a most sharp sauce. And then is it not then well served into a sweet goose? Oh, it's a wit of chevron that stretches from an inch narrow to an L broad. I'll stretch it out for that word broad, which added to the goose proves thee far and wide a broad goose. <laughs> <laughs> Why, is this not better now than groaning for love? Now art thou sociable, now art thou Romeo, now art thou what thou art by art as well as by nature. For this dribbling love is like some great natural that runs lolling up and down to hide his bauble in a hole. <laughs> stop there, stop there. Thou desirest me to stop my tail against the hair. Thou <laughs> hast else have made thy tail large. Oh, thou art deceived. I would have made it short. For I was come to the whole depth of my tale and meant indeed to occupy the argument no longer. <laughs> Here's goodly gear. Oh, a oh, sail, oh. a sail. Oh, to a shirt and a smock. Peter. Anon. My fan, Peter. <laughs> Good Peter to hide her face for her fans the fairer face. <laughs> God, you good morrow, gentlemen. Goody, goody. Is uh, it goody? Tis no less, I tell you. For the bawdy hand of the dial is now upon the prick of noon. <laughs> Out upon it, what a man are you? One gentlewoman that God has made himself to mark. By my trophy, is well said. For himself to mark, quotha. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Gentlemen, hmm. can any of you tell me where I may find the young Romeo? Ah! Um, um. I can tell you. But young Romeo will be older when you have found him than he was when you sought him. Oh. <laughs> I am the youngest of that name, for fault of a worse. You say well. Uh, yeah, yeah. The worst well, very well took in place. Wisely. Wisely. <laughs> if you be he, sir, I desire some confidence with you. Oh. <laughs> she will indict him to some supper. <laughs> aboard! 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 So <laughs> no hair, sir. Oh. <laughs> Unless a hair, sir, in a Lenten pie that is somewhat stale and hoar ere it be spent. Oh, no. An old hair hoar is an old hair hoar, no. a very good meat in Lent. But a hair that is hoar is too much for the score if it hoars ere it be spent. Romeo, when you come to your father's, we are to dinner thither. I will follow you. Farewell. Ancient lady, moo moo moo, farewell. Oh, an old day whore, an old day whore. Very good food in Lent. Oh, what sort of mushroom was this who was so full of his ropery? A gentleman nurse that loves to hear himself talk and will speak more in a minute than he will stand to in a month. Can't speak anything against me. I'll take him down and he will last here than he is. And twenty such checks. And if I cannot, I'll find those that shall. Scurvy knave. I'm none of his flirt gills. I'm none of his skeins, mates. And I will stand by too and suffer every name to use me at his pleasure. Oh! I saw no man use you at his pleasure. If I had, my weapon should quickly have been out. I warrant you, I dare draw soon as another man. If I see occasion in a good quarrel, <laughs> and the law on my side. No, for God, I'm so vexed every part about me quivers. <laughs> Scurvy, oh. Pray you, sir, a word. And as I told you, my young lady bid me inquire you out. What she bid me say, I will keep to myself. We but first, let me tell you. If ye should lead her in a fool's paradise, as they say, it were a very gross kind of behaviour, as they say. For the gentlewoman is young. And therefore, if you should deal double with her, truly were an ill thing to be offered to any gentlewoman, and very weak dealing. Nurse, commend me to thy lady and mistress. I protest unto the... Good heart and faith, I will tell her as much. Lord, Lord, she will be a joyful woman. What wilt thou tell her, nurse? Thou dost not mark me. I will tell her, sir, that you do protest. Or she's I take it as a gentlemanlike offer. Bid her devise some means to come to shrift this afternoon. There she shall, at Friar Lawrence's cell, be shrived and married. Oh! Here is for thy pains. No, truly, sir, not a penny. Go to, I say you shall. Oh, this, <laughs> this afternoon, sir. Well, she shall be there. And stay, good nurse, behind the abbey wall. Within this hour, my man shall be with thee and bring thee cords made like a tackle stair, which to the high top gallant of my joy shall be my convoy in the secret night. Farewell, be trusty, and I'll quit thy pains. 
Farewell, commend me to thy mistress. <laughs> no, God in heaven bless thee. <laughs> it's Arky, sir. What says thou, my dear nurse? It's your man's secret. Huh? I mean, did you ne'er hear say two may keep counsel, putting one away? Warrant thee, my man's as true as steel. Ah. Well, sir, my mistress is the sweetest lady. <laughs> Lord, not when was a little prating thing. Is it, is it, oh, oh, there's a nobleman in town. One Paris would fain lay knife aboard. But she could so as at least see a toad, as very toad as see him. Yet yeah, I anger her sometimes and tell her that Paris is the proper man. But I'll warrant you when I say so, she looks as pale as any clout in the versal world. <laughs> it doth not Rosemary and Romeo begin both with a letter. I nurse, what of that? Both with an R? Yeah. It's our mocker. That's the dog's name. R is for the. No, I know it begins with some other letter. She has the prettiest sententious of it, of you and Rosemary. It would do you good to hear it. She... Commend me to thy lady. Aye, a thousand times. <laughs> Peter, a horn. And a pace. The clock struck nine when I did send the nurse. In half an hour, she promised to return. Perchance she cannot meet him. <laughs> That's not so. Oh, she is lame. Love's herald should be thoughts, which ten times faster glides than the sun's beams driving back shadows of a lowering hill. Therefore do nimble pinion doves draw love. And therefore had the wind swift cupid wings. Now is the sun upon the highmost hill of this day's journey, and from nine till twelve is three long hours, yet she has not come. Had she affections and warm, youthful blood, she would be swift in motion as a ball. My words would bandy her to my sweet love, and his to me. But old folks, Many fain as they were dead, unwieldy, slow, heavy, and pale as lead. Oh, God, she comes. Oh, honey nurse, what news? Hast thou met with him? Send thy man away. Peter, stay at the gate. Now, good sweet nurse. Oh, Lord, why look'st thou sad? Though news be sad, yet tell them merrily. If good, thou shamest the music of sweet news by playing at me with so sour a face. I am a weary. Give me leave a while. Fie, how my bones ache. What a chance have I. Oh, that's my bones and I thy news. Nay, come, I prithee, speak. Good, good nurse, speak. Jesus, what haste? Can I not stay a while? Do you not see that I'm out of breath? How art thou out of breath when thou hast breath to say to me that thou art out of breath? The excuse that thou dost make in this delay is longer than the tale thou dost excuse. Is thy news good or bad? Answer to that, say either, and I'll stay the circumstance. Let me be satisfied. Is it good or bad? Well, you've made a simple choice. You know not I had to choose a man. Romeo? <laughs> no, not he. Though his face be better than any man's, yet his leg excels all men's. Mm. And for a hand and a foot and a body, though they be not to be talked on, yet they are past compare. He is not the flower of courtesy, but I'll warrant him as gentle as a lamb. <laughs> Go thy ways, wench, serve God. What have you dined at home? No, no, but all this did I know before. What says he of our marriage? What of that? Lord, how my head aches. What a head am I. <laughs> it beats as you would fall in twenty pieces. Oh, my back. That oh. other side. Oh! My back, my back. Beshrew your heart for sending me around to catch my death with jaunting up and down. <laughs> Faith, I am sorry that thou art not well. Sweet, sweet, sweet nurse. Tell me, what says my love? Your love says, like an honest gentleman, and a courteous and a kind and a handsome, and I'll warrant a virtuous. Where's your mother? <laughs> Where is my 
my mother why she is within. Where should she be? How oddly thou repliest. Your love says, like an honest gentleman, where is your mother? Oh, God's lady, dear, are you so hot, Mary? Come up, I trow. Is this the poultice for my aching bones? Henceforward, do your messages yourself. <laughs> Here's such a coil. Come, what says Romeo? Have you got leave to go to Shrift today? I have. Then hire you hence to Friar Lawrence's cell. There stays a husband to make you a wife. <laughs> <laughs> now comes the wanton blood up in your cheeks. They'll be in scarlet straight at any news. Are you to church? I must another way to fetch a ladder, by the which your love must climb a bird's nest soon when it is dark. Oh, I am the drudge and toil in your delight. But you shall bear the burden soon, at night. Go, I'll to dinner. Hie you to the cell. Hie to high fortune. Honest man, <laughs> farewell. So smile the heavens upon this holy act that after hours with sorrow chide us not. Amen. Amen. But come what sorrow can, it cannot countervail the exchange of joy that one short minute gives me in her sight. Do thou but close our hands with holy words, then love devouring death do what he dare. It is enough I may but call her mine. These violent delights have violent ends, and in their triumph die, like fire and powder which as they kiss consume. The sweetest honey is loathsome in his own deliciousness, and in the taste confounds the appetite. Therefore love moderately. Long love doth so, too swift arrives as tardy as too slow. Here comes the lady. Oh, so light a foot will ne'er wear out the everlasting fleet. A lover may bestride the gossamer that idles in the wanton summer air, and yet not fall, so light is vanity. Good even to my ghostly compass. Romeo shall thank thee, daughter, for us both. As much to him, else is his thanks too much. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Juliet, if the measure of thy joy be heaped like mine, and that thy skill be more to blazon it, then sweeten with thy breath this neighbor air, and let rich music's tongue unfold the imagined happiness that both receive in either by this Dear encounter. Conceit, <laughs> more rich in matter than in words brags of a substance, not of ornament. They are but beggars that can count their worth. But my true love is grown to such excess, I cannot sum up some of half my wealth. Come, come with me, and we will make short work. For by your leaves, he you shall not stay alone till Holy Church incorporate two in one. I pray the good Mercutio let's retire. The day is hot. The capels are abroad. And if we meet, we shall not escape a brawl. For now, these hot days is the mad blood stirring. <laughs> thou art like one of those fellows that when he enters upon the confines of a tavern, Claps me his sword upon the table and says, God, send me no need of thee. And by the operation of the second cup, hath drawn him on the drawer when indeed there is no need. Am I like such a fellow? Come, oh, come, come. Thou art as hot a jack in thy mood as any in Italy. And as soon moved to be moody and as soon moody to be moved. And what two? Nay, nay, and there were two such, there would be none shortly. But one would kill the other. Thou, I don't want to quarrel with a man that hath a hair more or a hair less in his beard than oh. thou hast. Thou wilt quarrel with a man for cracking nuts, having no other reason, but that thou hast hazel eyes. And what eye but such an eye would spy out such a quarrel? Thy head is as full of quarrels as an egg is full of meat, uh. and yet thy head has been beaten as addle as an egg for quarrelling. 
I did quarrel with a man for coughing in the street because it hath woken thy dog that hath lain asleep in the sun. And didst thou not fall out with a tailor for wearing his new doublet before Easter, and with another for tying his new shoes with old ribbon? And yet thou wert due to me from quarrelling? And I was so apt to quarrel as thou wert. Any man should buy the fee simple of my life for an hour and a quarter. <laughs> the fee simple. Oh, simple. <laughs> <laughs> By my head, here comes the cabinets. By my heel, I care not. Follow me close, for I will speak with them. Gentlemen, good e'en. A word with one of you. And but one word with one of us? Couple it with something, make it a word and a blow. You shall find me apt enough for that, sir, and you will give me occasion. <laughs> Could you not take some occasion without giving? Mercutio, thou consortest with Romeo. Consort? What, dost thou make minstrels of us? And thou makes minstrels of us look to hear nothing but discords. Here is my fiddlestick. Here's that shall make you dance, Zoons, consort. We talk here in the public haunt of men. Either withdraw into some private place, or reason coldly of your grievances, or else depart. Here, all eyes gaze on us. Men's eyes are made to gaze, and let them look. I will not budge for no man's pleasure, I. Well, peace be with you, sir. Here comes my man. I'll be hanged, sir, if you wear your livery. Man, you go before the field. He'll be your follower. Your worship may, in that sense, call him man. Romeo! The love I bear thee can afford no better term than this. Thou art a villain. Tybalt, the reason that I have to love thee doth much excuse the appertaining rage to such a greeting. Villain am I none. Therefore, farewell, I see thou knowst me not. Boy! This shall not excuse the injuries thou hast done me. Therefore, turn and draw. I do protest I never injured thee, but loved thee better than thou canst devise, till thou shalt know the reason of my love. And so good Capulet, which name I tender as dearly as mine own, be satisfied. Come <laughs> <laughs> on, dishonorable by of submission. Palace of Carter carries it away. Tybalt! You rat catcher. Will you walk? What wilt thou have with me? Good king of cats. Nothing but one of your nine lives. But I mean to make bold with all as you use me here after dry beat the rest of the eight. Will you pluck your sword out of this pilcher by the ears? Make haste. May mine be about your ears ere it be out. I am for you. Hey, Tim out! Tushio! Put to reverse, sir. <laughs> Meow! Oh, gentle Matusha, put thy rapier up! Oh. <laughs> Come, sir. Your facade.
Have nothing. What? I tell her? I uh, sc scratch, just scratch. Oh, there it is. Oh, it's my pain. Go, 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 fetch a surgeon. Courage, man, the hurt cannot be much. Ah, it is not so deep as a well, nor so wide as a church door. Is it not? Go, oh, sir. Oh, pray on both your houses. Oh, I'm Pepe and I warrant of this world. Oh, ask me tomorrow and you will find me a grave man. I'm playing on both your houses. So, a dog, a rat, a mouse, a cat. Oh, to, to scratch a man to death. A braggart, a rogue. A villain that fights by the book of Richard. Why the devil came you between us? I was hurt under your arm. I thought all for the best. Oh. Oh, look. Help me into a house with the holy oil. I shall faint. Oh! 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 Play on both your houses. They've made worms meet on me. I have it, and sound it, too. Oh, oh your house. This gentleman, the prince's near ally, my very friend, hath got this mortal hurt in my behalf. My reputation stained by Tybalt's slander. Tybalt that an hour hath been my cousin. Oh, sweet Juliet, thy beauty hath made me effeminate, and in my temper softened valor's steel. Oh, Romeo. Romeo, brave Cusio is dead. Gallant spirit hath aspired the clouds which too untimely heard had scorned the earth. This day's black fate on more days doth depend. This but begins the woe others must end. Here comes the furious Tybalt back again. Alive in triumph and Mercutio slain. Away to heaven, respective lenity. And far I fury be my conduct now. Now, Tybalt, take the villain back again that late thou gavest me. For Mercutio's soul is but a little way above our head, stained for thy to keep him company. Either thou or I or both must go with him. Oh! Oh, thou wretched boy that didst consort him here. Shut with him. Hey, this shall determine that. Stand not amazed. The prince will doom thee death if thou art taken. Hence be gone away! Oh, I am fortune's foe! Why dost thou stay? <laughs> Which way run he that killed Mercutio? 
Tybalt, that murderer, which way ran he? There lies that Tybalt. Up, sir, go with me. I charge you in the prince's name, obey. Where are the vile beginners of this fray? Oh, noble prince. I can discover all the unlucky manage of this fatal brawl. There lies the man slain by young Romeo, who slew thy kinsman, brave Mercutio. Tybalt! My cousin! Oh, my brother's child! Oh, prince! Oh, cousin, husband! Oh, the blood is spilled of my dear kinsman! Prince, as thou art true, for blood of ours shed blood of Montague! No! Oh, cousin! Benvolio, who began this bloody fray? Tybalt, your slave, <laughs> whom Romeo's hand did slay. Romeo, who spoke him fair, bid him think how nice the quarrel was, and urge with all your high displeasure. All this, uttered with gentle breath, calm look, knees humbly bowed, could not take truce with the unruly spleen of Tybalt, death to peace, but that he tilts with piercing steel a bold Mercutio's breast, who all is hot, turns deadly point to point, and with a martial scorn, with one hand, beats cold death aside, and with the other, sends it back to Tybalt, whose dexterity retorts it. Romeo, he cries aloud, Hold, friends, friends, part! And swifter than his tongue, his agile arm beats down their fatal points, and twixt them rushes. Underneath whose arm, an envious thrust from Tybalt hit the life of stout Mercutio. And then Tybalt fled. But by and by comes back to Romeo, who had but new to entertain revenge, and tooth they go like lightning. For ere I could draw to part them, was stout Tybalt slain. And as he fell, did Romeo turn and fly. This is the truth. Or let Benvolio die. He is a kinsman to the Montague. Affection makes him false. He speaks not true. Some twenty of them fought in this black strife. And all that twenty could but kill one life. I beg for justice, which thou, Prince, must give. Romeo slew Tybalt. Romeo must not live, no! Romeo slew him. He slew Mercutio, who now the price of this dear blood doth owe. Not Romeo, Prince. He was Mercutio's friend. His fault concludes but what the law should end. The life of Tybalt. And for that offence, immediately we do exile him hence. No! I have an interest in your hate's proceeding. My blood for your rude brawls doth lie a-bleeding. But I'll immerse you with so strong a fine that you shall all repent the loss of mine. Oh. I will be deaf to pleading and excuses. Nor tears nor prayers shall purchase out abuses, therefore use none. <laughs> but Romeo hence in haste, else when he is found, that hour is his last. Bear hence this body and attend our will. Mercy but murders, pardoning those that kill. <laughs> Gallop apace, you fiery-footed steeds, towards Phoebus' lodging. Such a wagoner as Phaeton would whip you to the west and bring in cloudy night immediately. Spread thy close curtain, love, performing night that runaway's eyes may wink and Romeo leap to these arms untalked of and unseen. Lovers can see to do their amorous rites by their own beauty. Or if love be blind, it best agrees with night. Come, civil night, thou sober-suited matron all in black, and learn me how to lose a winning match played for a pair of stainless maidenhoods. Would my unmanned blood baiting in my cheeks with thy black mantle till strange love grow bold, think true love acted simple modesty. Come, night. Come, Romeo. Come, thou day and night. For thou wilt lie upon the wings of night, whiter than new snow upon a raven's back. Come, gentle night. Come, loving, black-browed night. Give me my Romeo. And when I shall die, take him and cut him out in little stars. And he will make the 
face of heaven so fine that all the world will be in love with night and pay no worship to the garish sun. Oh, I have bought the mansion of a love, but not possessed it. And though I am so not yet enjoyed, so tedious is this day as is the night before some festival to an impatient child that hath new robes and may not wear them. Oh, here comes my nurse, and she brings news and every tongue that speaks, but Romeo's name speaks heavenly eloquence. Now, nurse, what news? What is thou there? The cords that Romeo bid thee fetch? Aye, aye, the cords. Ay me, what news? Oh, why dost thou wring thy hands? Oh, where a day he's dead, he's dead, he's dead. We are undone, lady, we are undone. Alack, the day he's gone, he's killed, he's dead. Can heaven be so envious? Oh, Romeo can, though heaven cannot. Oh, Romeo, Romeo. Whoever would have thought it, Romeo. What devil art thou that dost torment me thus? This torture should be wrought in dismal hell. Hath Romeo slain himself? Say thou, but I and that bare vowel, I shall poison more than the death-darting eye of cockatrice. I am not I, if there be such an eye, or those eyes shut that make the answer I. If he be slain, say I, or if not, no. Brief sounds determine of my weal or woe. I saw the wound. I saw it with mine eyes. God save the mark, here on his manly breast. A piteous corse, a bloody piteous corse. Pale, pale as ashes, all bedaubed in blood, all in gore blood. I swound it at the sight. Oh, break my heart. Poor bankrupt, break at once. To prison eyes, their look and liberty. Vile earth to earth resign. End motion here. And thou and Romeo pressed one heavy fear. <laughs> oh, Tibble, Tibble, the best friend I had. Oh, courteous Tibble, honest gentleman. And ever I should live to see thee dead. What storm is this that blows so contrary? Is Romeo slaughtered and is Tibble dead? My dearest cousin and my dearer lord. That dreadful trumpet sound the general doom. For who is living if those two are gone? Tybalt is gone, and Romeo banished. Romeo that killed him, he is banished. Oh, God. Did Romeo's hand shed Tybalt's blood? It did, it did. Alas, the day it did. Oh, serpent heart. Hid with a flowering face. Did ever dragon keep so fair a cave? Beautiful tyrant, fiend angelical, dove feathered raven, wolfish ravening lamb, despise the substance of divine show just opposite to what thou justly seemst. A damned saint, an honorable villain. Oh, nature, what hast thou to do in hell? Without its power, the spirit of a fiend in mortal paradise of such sweet flesh. Was ever book containing such vile matter so fairly bound? Oh, the deceit you dwell in such a gorgeous palace. There's no trust, no faith, no honesty in men. All perjured, all forsworn, all not, all dissemblers. Oh, where's my man? Give me some aqua vita. These griefs, these woes, these sorrows make me old. Shame come to Romeo. Blistered be thy tongue for such a wish. He was not born to shame upon his brow. Shame is a shame to sit. What is a throne where honor may be crowned sole monarch of the universal earth? Oh, what a beast was I to chide at him. Will you speak well of him that killed your cousin? 
Shall I speak ill of him that is my husband? Ah, oh, poor my lord. What tongue shall smooth thy name when I, thy three hours' wife, have mangled it? But wherefore, villain, didst thou kill my cousin? That villain cousin would have killed my husband. Back, foolish tears, back to your native spring. Your tributary drops belong to woe, which you mistaking offer up to joy. My husband lives that Tybalt would have slain, and Tybalt's dead that would have slain my husband. All this is comfort. Wherefore weep I then? Some word there was worse than Tybalt's death that murdered me. I would forget it fain, but oh, it presses to my memory like damned guilty deeds to sinners' minds. Tybalt is dead, and Romeo banish it. Banish it, that one word, banish it, hath slain ten thousand Tybalt's. Tybalt's death was woe enough, if it had ended there. Or if sour woe delights in fellowship and needly will be ranked with other griefs, why followed not when she said, Tybalt's dead, thy father, thy mother, nay, or both, which modern lamentation might have moved. But with a rearward following Tybalt's death, Romeo, is banish it. Speak that word. Is father, mother, Tybalt, Romeo, Juliet, all slain, all dead. Romeo is banish it. There is no end, no limit, measure, Bound in that word's death. No words can that woe sound. Where's my father and my mother, nurse? Weeping and wailing over Tybalt's corpse. Will you go to them? Should I will bring you thither. Wash they his wounds with tears. Mine shall be spent when there's a dry for Romeo's... Punishment. Take up those cords. More ropes. You are beguiled, both you and I, for Romeo is exiled. He made you for a highway to my bed. But I am made die, maiden widowed. Come, courts. Come, nurse. I'll to my wedding bed. And death, not Romeo, take my maidenhead. Hide to your chamber. I'll find Romeo to comfort you. I wot well where he is. Hark ye, your Romeo will be here at night. I'll tell you. He's hid at Lawrence's cell. Oh, find him and give this ring to my true knight. And bid him come to take his last farewell. Romeo, come forth. Come forth, thou fearful man. <laughs> Affliction is enamored of thy parts, and thou art wedded to calamity. <laughs> Father, what news? What is the prince's doom? What sorrow craves acquaintance at my hand that I yet know not? Too familiar is my dear son with such sour company. I bring thee tidings of the prince's doom. What less than doomsday is the prince's doom? A gentler judgment vanished from his lips. Not body's death, but body's banishment. Banishment? Be merciful, say death. For exile hath more terror in his look, much more than death. Do not say banishment. Hence from Verona art thou banished. Be patient, for the world is broad and wide. There is no world without Verona walls, but purgatory, torture, hell itself. Hence banished is banished from the world, and world's exile is death. And 
banished as death mistermed, calling death banished, thou cuts my head off with a golden axe and smiles upon the stroke that murders me. O oh, deadly sin, O oh, rude unthankfulness, thy fault our law calls death, but the kind prince, taking thy part, hath rushed aside the law and turned that black word death to banishment. This is dear mercy, and thou seest it not. It is torture and not mercy. Heaven is here where Juliet lives. And every cat and dog and little mouse, every unworthy thing, live here in heaven and may look on her. But Romeo may not. More validity, more honourable state, more courtship lives in carrion flies than Romeo. They may seize on the white wonder of dear Juliet's hand and steal immortal blessings from her lips, who even in pure and vestal modesty still blushes, thinking their own kisses sin. This may flies do when I from this must fly. And says thou yet that exile is not death. But Romeo may not, he is banished. Flies may do this, when I from this must fly. They are free men, but I am banished. Hadst thou no poison mixed, no sharp ground knife, no sudden mean of death, though ne'er so mean, but banish it to kill me. Banish it. Oh, friar, the damned use that word in hell. Howlings attended. How hast thou the heart, being a divine, a ghostly confessor, a sin absolver, and my friend professed to mangle me with that word? Banish it. Thou fond madman, hear me a little speak. Oh, thou wilt speak again of banishment. I'll give the armour to keep off that word. Adversity, sweet milk, philosophy, to comfort thee, though thou art banished. Yet banished, hang up philosophy. Unless philosophy can make a Juliet displant a town, reverse a prince's doom, it helps not, it prevails not. Talk no more. Oh, I see that madmen have no ears. How should they when that wise men have no eyes? Let me dispute with thee of thy estate. Thou canst not speak of that thou dost not fear. <laughs> But thou as young as I, Juliet, I love, and I but married, Tybalt murdered, doting like me, <laughs> like me, banish it. <laughs> then might so speak, then might so tear thy hair, and fall upon the ground as I do now. <laughs> Taking the measure of an unmade grave. Rise, well not. Good Romeo, hide thyself. Not I, unless the breath of heart sick groans mislike and fold me from the search of eyes. Hark how they knock. Who's there? Romeo, oh, rise, thou wilt be taken. Stay a while. Look, stand up. Run to my study. <laughs> by and by. Oh, God's will, what simpleness is this? I come, I come. Who knocks so hard? Whence come you? What's your will? Let me come in and you shall know my end. I come from Lady Juliet. Oh, welcome, then. Oh, holy Friar, oh, tell me, Holy Friar, where's my lady's lord? Where's Romeo? There on the crown, with his own tears made drunk. Oh, he's even in my mistress' case. Just in her case. Oh, woeful sympathy. Piteous predicament, even so lies she. Blubbering and weeping, weeping and blubbering. Stand up, stand up. Stand and you be a man. For Juliet's sake, for her sake, rise and stand. Why should you fall into so deep an hole? Nurse. Ah, oh, sir, ah, oh, sir, death's the end of all. Speaks out, Juliet. How is it with her? Does she not think me an old murderer now that I have stayed the childhood of our joy with blood removed but little from her own? Where is she and how does she? And what says my concealed lady to our cancelled love? Oh, she says nothing, sir, but weeps and weeps. Now falls on her bed, then starts up and Tibble calls, and then on Romeo cries, and then down falls again. As if that name shot from the deadly level of a gun did murder her. As that name's cursed hand murdered her kinsman. Oh, tell me, Friar, tell me in what vile part of this anatomy doth my name lodge. Tell me that I may sack the hateful mansion. Hey. Oh, my desperate hand! Oh. Art thou a man? Thy form cries out thou art, thy tears are womanish. Thy wild axe denote the unreasonable fury of a beast. 
unseemly woman in a seeming man, an ill-beseeming beast in seeming folk. Thou hast amazed me. By my holy order, I thought thy disposition better tempered. Hast thou slain Tybalt? And wilt thou slay thyself and slay thy lady that in thy life lives by doing damned hate upon thyself? <laughs> Why railst thou upon thy birth to heaven and earth? Since birth and heaven and earth, all three do meet in thee at once, which thou at once wouldst lose. <laughs> fie, fie, thou shamest thy shape, thy love, thy wit. Just like a usurer abounds in all, but uses none in that true use indeed, which should beget thy shape, thy love, thy wit. Thy noble shape is but a form of wax, digressing from the valour of a man. Thy dear love sworn but hollow perjury, killing that love which thou hast vowed to cherish. Thy wit, that ornament to shape and love, misshapen in the conduct of them both, like powder in a skilled soldier's flask, is set afire by thine own ignorance, and thou dismembered with thine own defence. What rouse thee, man? Thy Juliet is alive, for whose dear sake thou wast but lately dead. There art thou happy. Tybalt will kill thee, but thou slewest Tybalt. There art thou happy. The law that threatened death becomes thy friend and turns it to exile. There art thou happy. A pack of blessings light upon thy back. Happiness courts thee in a best array. But like a misbehaved and sullen wench, thou pounce upon thy fortune and thy love. Take heed, take heed. For such die miserable. Go get thee to thy love, as was decreed. Ascend her chamber. Hence, and comfort her. But look thou, stay not till the watch be set, for then thou canst not pass to Mantua, where thou shalt live, till we can find a time to blaze your marriage. Reconcile your friends, beg pardon of the prince, and call thee back with twenty hundred thousand times more joy than thou went forth in lamentation. Go before, nurse, commend me to thy lady, bid her hasten all the house to bed, which heavy sorrow makes them apt unto. Romeo is coming. Oh, Lord, I could have stayed here all the night to hear good counsel. Oh, what learning is. My Lord, I'll tell my lady you will come. Do so, and bid my sweet prepare to chide. Oh, here, sir. A ring she bid me give you, sir. Hi, you. Make haste, for it grows very late. How oh, well my comfort is revived by this. Go hence, good night. And here stands all your state. Either be gone before the watch be set, or by the break of day disguised from hence. Sojourn in Mantua, I'll find out thy man, and he shall signify from time to time every good hap to you that chance is here. Give me thy hand, tis late. Farewell, good night. But that a joy past joy calls out on me, it were a grief so brief to part with thee. Farewell. Things have fallen out, sir, so unluckily that we have had no time to move our daughter. Look, you, she loved her kinsman Tybalt dearly, and so did I. Well, we were born to die. It is very late, she'll not come down tonight. I promise you, but for your company, I would have been abed an hour ago. These times of woe afford no time to woo. Madam, good night. Commend me to your daughter. I will, and know her mind early tomorrow. Tonight she's mewed up to her heaviness. Sir Paris, I will make a desperate tender of my child's love. I think she will be ruled in all respects by me. Nay, more, I doubt it not. Wife, go you to her ere you go to bed. Acquaint her here of my son Paris's love and bid her, mark you me, on Wednesday next... But soft, what day is this? Monday, my lord. Monday? Ah. Ah, well, Wednesday's too soon. A Thursday, let it be. A Thursday, tell her she shall be married to this noble earl. Will you be ready? Do you like this haste? Oh, we'll my... keep no greater do a few friends. Uh, for, look you, 
Tybalt being slain so late, it may be thought that we held him carelessly, being our kinsman, if we revel much. Therefore, we'll have some half a dozen friends, and there an end. But what say you to Thursday? My lord, I would that Thursday were tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, get you gone. A Thursday be it then. Go you to Juliet, ere you go to bed. Prepare her wife against this wedding day. Farewell, my lord. <laughs> Light to my chamber, ho! Oh, afore me, it is so very late that we may call it early, by and by. Good night. Wilt thou be gone? It is not yet near day. It was a nightingale, and not the lark that pierced the fearful hollow of thine ear. Nightly she sings on yon pomegranate tree. Believe me, love, it was a nightingale. It was the lark, the herald of the morn, no nightingale. Look, love, what envious streaks do lace the severing clouds in yonder east. Night's candles are burnt out, and jocund day stands tiptoe on the misty mountain tops. I must be gone and live, or stay and die. Yon light is not the daylight. I know it, I. It is some meteor that the sun exhales to be to thee this night a torch bearer and light thee on thy way to Mantua. Never stay yet. Thou needs not to be gone. Let me be tain, let me be put to death. I am content so thou wilt have it so. I'll say yon grey is not the morning's eye, it is but the pale reflex of Cynthia's brow. Nor that is not the lark whose notes do beat the vaulty heaven so high above our heads. I have more care to stay than will to go. Come death and welcome, Juliet wills it so. How is my soul? Let's talk. It is not day. It is. It is. I hence be gone away. It is the lark that sings so out of tune, straining harsh discords and unpleasing sharps. Some say the lark makes sweet division. This doth not so, for she divideth us. <laughs> Some say the lark and lo, the toad change eyes. Oh, now I would they had changed voices too. Since arm from arm that voice doth us affray, hunting the end with hunts up to the day. Oh, now be gone. More light and light it grows. More light and light, more dark and dark our woes. Madam. Yes. Your lady mother is coming to your chamber. Oh. The day is broke. Be wary. Look about. Then window, let day in. And let life out. Farewell. Farewell, one kiss. And I'll descend. <gasps> I must hear from thee every day and the hour. For in a minute there are many days. Oh, by this count, there shall be much in years or I can behold my Romeo. Farewell, I will omit no opportunity that may convey my greetings, love, to thee. Oh, thinks thou we shall ever meet again? I doubt it not. And all these woes shall serve for sweet discords in our times to come. Oh, God, I have an ill divining soul. Methinks I see thee now, thou art so low, as one dead in the bottom of a tomb. Either my eyesight fails, or thou looks pale. And trust me, love, in my eyes, so do you. Dry sorrow drinks our blood. Adieu. Adieu. Oh, fortune, fortune. All men call thee fickle. If thou art fickle, what dost thou with him that is renowned for faith? Be fickle fortune, for then I hope thou wilt not keep him long, but send him back. <laughs> Mother, 
Is she not down so late or up so early? What unaccustomed cause procures her hither? <laughs> Why, how now, Juliet? Madam, I'm not well. Ever more weeping for your cousin's death? <laughs> but wilt thou wash him from his grave with tears? And if thou couldst, thou couldst not make him live. Therefore, have done. <laughs> Some grief shows much of love, but much of grief shows still some want of wit. Yet let me weep with such a feeling loss. So shall you feel the loss, but not the friend which you weep for. Feeling so the loss, I cannot choose but ever weep the friend. Well, girl, I weep it's not so much for his death as that the villain lives which slaughtered him. What villain, madam? Well, that same villain, Romeo. Well, that he be many miles asunder. God pardon, I do with all my heart. And yet no man like he doth grieve my heart. It is because the traitor murderer lives. I, madam, from the reach of these my hands. Would none but I might venge my cousin's death. We will have vengeance for it, fear you not. <gasps> then weep no more. I'll send to one in Mantua where that same banished renegade doth live. Shall give him such an unaccustomed dram that he shall soon keep Tybalt company. And then I hope thou wilt be satisfied. Indeed, I never shall be satisfied with Romeo till I behold him. Dead is my poor heart so for a kinsman vexed. <gasps> Madam, if you could find out but a man to bear a poison, I would temper it that Romeo should upon receipt thereof soon sleep in quiet. <gasps> oh, how my heart abhors to hear him named and cannot come to him. To wreak the love I bore my cousin upon his body that had slaughtered him. Find thou the means, and I'll find such a man. But now, I'll tell thee joyful tidings, girl. Joy comes well in such a needy time. What are they, beseech your ladyship? Oh, well, well, thou hast a careful father, child. One who, to put thee from thy heaviness, has sorted out a sudden day of joy that thou expects not, nor I look not for. Madam, in happy time. What day is that? Marry, my child. Early next Thursday morn, the gallant, young and noble gentleman, the County Paris, at St. Peter's Church, shall happily make thee there a joyful bride. Oh, by St. Peter's Church, and Peter too, he shall not make me there a joyful bride. I wonder at this haste that I must wed her, he that should be husband comes to woo. I pray you, tell my lord and father, madam, I will not marry yet, and when I do, I swear it shall be Romeo, whom you know I hate, rather than Paris. Oh, these are news indeed. Here comes your father, tell him so yourself, and see how he will take it at your hands. When the sun sets, the earth doth drizzle dew, but for the sunset of my brother's son, it rains downright. How now, a condit girl? What still in tears ever more showered? <laughs> in one little body thou counterfeitest a bark, a sea, a wind. For still thy eyes, which I may call the sea, do ebb and flow with tears. The bark thy body is sailing in the salt flood. The winds thy sighs, who raging with thy tears and they with them, without a sudden calm will overset thy tempest-tossed body. <laughs> How now, wife? Have you delivered to her our decree? I sir. But she will none, she gives you thanks. I would the fool were married to her grave. Soft, take me with you, take me with you. How will she none? Does she not give us thanks? Is she not proud? Does she not count her blessed, unworthy as she is, that we have wrought so worthy a gentleman to be her bride? Not proud you have, but thankful that you have. Proud could I never be of what I hate, but thankful even for hate. Which is meant love. How, 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 how? Chop logic, what is this? Proud, and I thank you, and I thank you not, and yet not proud. Mistress Minion, you. Thank me no thankings, nor proud me no prouds, but fettle your fine joints against Thursday next to go with Paris to St. Peter's Church, or I will drag thee on a hurdle leather. Out, you green sickness, carry on, out, you baggage, you tallow face. Why, what are you mad? Good father, I beseech you on my knees, hear me with patience, but to speak a Hang word. Hang thee, young baggage, disobedient wretch. I tell thee what, 
Get thee to church a Thursday or never after look me in the face. Speak not, reply not, do not answer me. My fingers itch. <laughs> Wife, we scarce thought us blessed that God hath lent us but this only child. And now I see this one is one too much and that we have a curse in having her out on her. God in heaven bless her. You're to blame, my lord, to rate her so. And why, my lady wisdom? Hold your tongue. Good prudence smatter with your gossips. Go. I speak no treason. Oh, God, you good evening. May not one speak. Peace, you mumbling fool. Utter your gravity or a gossip's bowl, for here we need it not. You are too hot. God spread it makes me mad! <laughs> Day, night, hour, tide, time, work, play, alone, in company. Still my care hath been to have her matched. And having now provided a gentleman of noble parentage, of fair demean, youthful, nobly trained, stuffed, as they say, with honourable parts, proportioned as one's thought would wish a man. And then, to have a wretched... Puling fool, a whining mammoth in her fortune's tender. To answer, I'll not wed, I cannot love, I am too young, I pray you pardon me. And you will not wed, I'll pardon you. Graze where you will, you shall not house with me. Look to it, think on it. I do not use the jest. Thursday is near. Lay hand on heart, advise, and you be mine. I'll give you to my friend. And you be not. Hang, beg, starve, die in the streets. For by my soul I'll ne'er acknowledge thee, nor what is mine shall never do thee good. <laughs> Trust to it, bethink you. I'll not be forsworn. <laughs> is there no pity sitting in the clouds that sees into the bottom of my grief? Oh, sweet my mother, cast me not away. Delay this marriage for a month, a week. Or if you do not make the bridal bed in that dim monument where Tybalt lies. Oh, not to me, for I'll not speak a word. Do as thou wilt, for I have done with thee. Oh, mermaid, mermaid. Oh, oh no. How shall this be prevented? <laughs> my husband is on earth. My faith in heaven. How shall that faith return again to earth unless that husband sendeth me from heaven by leaving earth? <laughs> Comfort me. Counsel me. Lack of lack that heaven should practice stratagems upon so soft a subject as myself. What sayest thou? Hast thou not a word of joy? Some comfort, nurse? Faith, here it is. Romeo is banished. And all the world to nothing that he dared ne'er come back to challenge you. Or if he do, it needs must be by stealth. Then, since the case so stands as now it doth, I think it best you're married with the county. Oh, he's a lovely gentleman. Romeo's a dish clout to him. An eagle, madam, hath not so green, so quick, so fair an eye as Paris hath. But shrew my very heart, I think you're happy in this second match, for it excels your first. Or if it did not, your first is dead. Or twere as good he were as living here and you no use of him. Speakest thou from thy heart? And from my soul, too, else beshrew them both. Amen. What? Well, thou hast comforted me marvellous much. Go in and tell my lady I am gone, having displeased my father, to Lawrence's cell to make confession and to be absolved. Marry, I will. And this is wisely done. Ancient damnation. O oh, most wicked fiend. Is it more sin to wish me thus forsworn? Or to dispraise my lord with that same tongue which she hath praised him with above compare so many thousand times? Go, counsellor. Thou and my bosom henceforth shall be twain. I'll to the friar to know his remedy. If 
if all else fail, myself have power to die. Thursday, sir. The time is very short. My father, Capulet, will have it so. And I am nothing slow to slack his haste. You say you do not know the lady's mind. And even as the course, I like it not. Immoderately, she weeps for Tybalt's death. And therefore, have a little talked of love, for Venus smiles not in a house of tears. Now, sir, her father counts it dangerous that she do give her sorrow so much sway. And, in his wisdom, hastes our marriage to stop the inundation of her tears. Which, too much minded by herself alone, may be put from her by society. Now do you know the reason of this haste? I would I knew not why it should be slow. Well, look, sir, here comes the lady toward myself. Happily met, my lady and my wife. That may be, sir, when I may be a wife. Oh, that may be, must be, love. On Thursday next. What must be, shall be. Now, that's a certain text. Come you to make confessions to this father? To answer that, I should confess to you. Do not deny to him that you love me. I will confess to you that I love him. <laughs> so will ye, I'm sure, that you love me. If I do so, it will be of more price being spoke behind your back than to your face. Oh. Poor soul. Thy face is much abused with tears. The tears have got small victory by that, for it was bad enough before their spite. Oh, thou wrongst it more than tears with that report. There is no slander, sir, which is the truth. And what I spake, I spake it to my face. Thy face is mine, and thou hast slandered it. It may be so, for it is not my own. Are you at leisure, Holy Father, now? Shall I come to you at evening mass? My leisure serves my pensive daughter now. My lord, we must entreat the time alone. God shield, I should disturb devotion. Juliet, on Thursday early will I rouse ye. Till then, adieu, and keep this holy kiss. Shut the door, and when thou hast done so, come weep with me past hope, past cure, past hell. Oh, Juliet, <laughs> I already know thy grief. It strains me past the compass of my wits. I hear thou must, and nothing may prorogue it, on Thursday next be married to this count. Tell me not, friar, that thou hearest of this, unless thou tell me how I may prevent it. If in thy wisdom thou canst give no help, do thou but call my resolution wise, and with this knife I'll help it presently. God joined my heart and Romeo's, thou our hands, and ere this hand by thee to Romeo sealed shall be the label to another deed, or my true heart with treacherous revolt turn to another, this shall slay them both. Therefore, out of thy long experience, time, give me some present counsel. Or oh, behold, twixt my extremes and me, this bloody knife shall play the umpire, arbitrating that which the commission of thy years and art could to no issue of true honour bring. Be not so long to speak. I long to die if what thou speak, speak not of remedy. Hold, daughter. I do spy a kind of hope which craves as desperate an execution as that is desperate which we would prevent. If rather than to marry Paris thou hast the strength of will to slay thyself, then is it likely thou wilt undertake a thing like death to chide away this shame that copes with death himself to escape it. And if thou darest, I'll give thee remedy. Oh, bid me leap rather than marry Paris from off the battlements of any tower or walk in thievish ways, or bid me lurk where serpents are, chain me with roaring bears, or hide me nightly in a charnel house, or covered quite with dead men's rattling bones, with reeky shanks and yellow chapless skulls, or bid me go into a new-made grave and hide me with a dead man in his tomb. Things that to hear them told have made me tremble, and I will do it without fear or doubt to live an unstained wife to my sweet love. Hold oh, then. Go home. Be merry. 
give consent to marry Paris. <sighs> Wednesday is tomorrow. Tomorrow night, look that thou lie alone. Let not the nurse lie with thee in thy chamber. Take thou this vial, being then in bed, and this distilled liquor drink thou off, when presently through all thy veins shall run a cold and drowsy humour, for no pulse shall keep his native progress but surcease. No warmth, no breath shall testify thou livest. The roses in thy lips and cheeks shall fade to wanny ashes, and thy eyes' windows fall like death when he shuts up the day of life. Each part deprived of subtle government, shall stiff and stark and cold appear like death. And in this borrowed likeness of shrunk death, thou shalt continue two and forty hours, and then awake as from a pleasant sleep. Now, when the bridegroom in the morning comes to rouse thee from thy bed, there art thou dead. Then as the manner of our country is, in thy best robes, Uncovered on the bier, thou shalt be born to that same ancient vault where all the kindred of the Capulets lie. In the meantime, against thou shalt awake, shall Romeo by my letters know our drift, and hither shall he come, and he and I will watch thy waking, and that very night shall Romeo bear thee hands to Mantua, and this shall free thee from this present shame. If no inconstant toy, nor womanish fear, abate thy valour in the act. Oh, give me, give me! Tell me not of fear. Oh, get you gone. Be strong and prosperous in this resolve. I'll send a friar with speed to Mantua with my letters to thy lord. Love, give me strength, and strength shall help afford. No, well, dear father. So many guests invite us, here I writ. Sit up. Go hire me twenty cunning cooks. Oh, you shall have none ill, sir, for I'll try if they can lick their fingers. How canst thou try them so? Oh, marry, sir, tis an ill cook that cannot lick his own fingers. Therefore, he that cannot lick his fingers goes not with me. Oh, go be gone. We should be much unfurnished for this time. What, is my daughter gone to Friar Lawrence? Aye, forsooth. Well, he may chance to do some good on her. A peevish, self-willed harlotry it is. See where she comes from, Shrift with Mary, look. How now, my headstrong? Where have you been gadding? Where I have learnt me to repent the sin of disobedient opposition to you and your behests. And I'm enjoined by Holy Lawrence to fall prostrate here to beg your pardon. Pardon, I beseech you. Henceforward, I'm ever ruled by you. Send for the county. Go tell him of this. I'll have this knot knit up tomorrow morning. I met the youthful lord at Laurencell and gave him what become at love I might not, stepping o'er the bounds of modesty. Why, I'm glad on it. This is well. Stand up. This is as it should be. Let me see the county. I marry. Go, I say, and fetch him hither. Now, afore God, this reverend holy friar, all our whole city is much bound to him. Nurse, will you go with me into my closet to help me sort such needful ornaments as you think fit to furnish me tomorrow? No, not till Thursday there is time enough. Go, nurse, go with her. We'll to church tomorrow. We shall be short in our provisions. It is now near night. Oh, tush, I will stir about, and all things shall be well, I warrant thee, wife. Go thou to Juliet, help to deck up her. I'll not to bed tonight. And I... let me alone. I'll play the hussy for this once. What ho! Ah, they're all forth. <laughs> well, I will walk myself to County Paris to prepare up him against tomorrow. Oh, my heart is wondrous light since the same wayward girl is so reclaimed. Aye, those attires are best. But, gentleness, I pray thee, leave me to myself tonight. For I've need of many orisons to move the heavens to smile upon my state, which well thou knowest is cross and full of sin. What are you busy, ho? Huh? Need you my help? No, madam, we have culled such necessaries as are behoveful for our state tomorrow. So please you let me now be left alone, and let the nurse this night sit up with you, for I'm sure you've your hands full all in this so sudden business. Good night. 
Get thee to bed and rest, for thou hast need. Farewell. God knows when we shall meet again. I have a faint, cold fear thrills through my veins that almost freezes up the heat of life. I'll call them back again to comfort me. Nurse! What should she do here? My dismal scene I needs must act alone. Come, vile. What if this mixture do not work at all? Shall I be married then tomorrow morning? No, no. This shall forbid it. Lie thou there. What if it be a poison? which the friar subtly hath ministered to have me dead. Lest in this marriage he should be dishonoured because he married me before to Romeo, I fear it is. And yet methinks it should not, for he hath still been tried a holy man. How, if when I am laid into the tomb, I wait before the time that Romeo come to redeem me, there's a fearful point. Shall I not then be stifled in the vault, to whose foul mouth no healthsome air breathes in, and there die strangled ere my Romeo comes? Or if I live, is it not very like the horrible conceit of death, a night, together with the terror of the places in a vault, an ancient receptacle where for these many hundred years the bones of all my buried ancestors are packed, where bloody Tybalt? Yet but green in earth lies festering in his shroud. Whereas they say at some hours in the night, spirits resort. Alack, alack, is it not like that I, so early waking, walk with the loathsome smells and shrieks like mandrakes torn out of the earth at living mortals hearing them run mad? Oh. If I wake, shall I not be distraught, environed with all these hideous fears, and madly play with my forefather's joints and pluck the mangled Tybalt from his shroud, and in this rage with some great kinsman's bone, as with a club, dash out my desperate brains? Oh, look, methinks I see my cousin's ghost seeking out Romeo that did spit his body upon a rapier's point. Stay, Tybalt, stay! <laughs> Drink, I drink to thee.
four spices, nurse. They call for dates and quinces in the pastry. Come, stir, stir, stir. The second cock hath crowed. The curfew bell hath rung. Tis three o'clock. Look to the baked meats, good Angelica, and spare not for cost. Go, you cockwee, and go. Get you to bed. Faith, you'll be sick tomorrow morning for this night's watching. No, not a whit. What? I have watched there now all night for lesser cause and ne'er been sick. Ah, you have been a mouse hunt in your time, but I will watch you from such watching now. Oh, jealous hood, a jealous hood. Uh, Sarah, what's there? Uh, things for the cook, sir, but I know not what. Well, make haste, make haste. Uh, uh, Sarah, fetch dialogues. And um, call Peter, he'll show thee where they are. <laughs> I have a head, sir, that will find out logs. And never trouble Peter for the matter. Mass and well said. <laughs> A merry horse and her. <laughs> Thou shalt be loggerhead. <laughs> Good father, tis day. The county will be here with music straight, for so he said he would. I hear him near. Nurse! Wife! What ho, nurse, I say, go wake and Juliet. Go trim her up. I'll go and chat with Paris. Aye, make haste, make haste. The bridegroom, he has come already. Oh. Make haste, I say. Mistress. What mistress? Juliet. Fast, I warrant her, she. Why, lad? Why, lady? Fie, you slug bed. What love, I say? Madam? Sweetheart? <laughs> Why, bride? But not a word. You take your penance now, sleep for a week. For the next night, I warrant the county Paris has set up his rest, that you shall rest but little. <laughs> God forgive me, marry and amen. How sound is she asleep? I need to wake her. Madam? 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 Aye, let the county take you in your bed. He'll fright you up, he faith, will it not be? What, dressed in your clothes and down again? I must needs wake you. Lady. <laughs> Lady. Lady. Alas. Alas. Yeah. Oh, lamentable day! What is the matter? Look, look, oh, heavy day! Oh, oh me. A child. My only life. Revive, look up, or I will die with thee. Help. Help, call help! For shame, bring Juliet forth. Her lord is come. She's dead, deceased. She's dead. Alack the day. Alack the day. She's dead. She's dead. She's dead. Let me see her. Out of her, she's cold. Her blood is settled and her joints are stiff. Life and these lips have long been separated. <laughs> Death lies on her like an untimely frost upon the sweetest flower of all the field. Oh. Woeful Death that hath ta'en her hence to make me wail ties up my tongue and will not let me speak. Come, is the bride ready to go to church? Ready to go, but never to return. O oh, son, the night before thy wedding day hath death lain with thy wife. There she lies, flower as she was deflowered by him. Death is my son-in-law, death is my heir. 
My daughter he hath wedded. I will die and leave him all life, living all his deaths. Oh, woe, oh, woeful, woeful, woeful day. Have I thought long to see this morning's face? Uh, Doth it give me such a sight as this? Yes, an unhappy, wretched, hateful day. Most miserable hour that had time sore in lasting labor of his pilgrimage. But what? Poor one. One poor and loving child, but one thing to rejoice and solace. <laughs> and cruel death has catched it from my side. Most lamentable day, most woeful day that ever, ever I did yet behold. Oh, day, oh, day, oh, day, oh, hateful day. Never was seen so black a day as this. Oh, woeful day. Oh, woeful day. <laughs> Beguiled, divorced, wronged, spited, slain. Oh, most detestable death by thee beguiled, by cruel, cruel thee quite overthrown. Oh, love, oh, life. Oh, not life, but love in death. Despised, distressed, hated, martyred, killed. Uncomfortable time, why camest thou now to murder, murder our solemnity? Oh, child, oh, child, my soul and not my child, dead art thou. Alack, my child is dead, and with my child my joys are buried. Peace, ho, for shame. Confusion's cure lies not in these confusions. Heaven and yourself had part in this fair maid. Now heaven hath all, and all the better is it for the maid. Your part in her you could not keep from death. But heaven keeps his part in eternal life. The most you sought was her promotion. For it was your heaven she should be advanced. And we pee now, seeing she is advanced above the clouds, as high as heaven itself. Oh, in this love you love your child so ill that you run mad, seeing that she is well. She is not well married that lives married long, but she's best married that dies married young. Dry up your tears and stick your rosemary on this fair course, and as the custom is, in all her best array, bear her to church. For though fond nature bids us all lament, yet nature's tears are reason's merriment. All things that we ordain at festival turn from their office to black funeral. Our instruments to melancholy bells, our wedding cheer to a sad burial feast. Our solemn hymns to sullen dirges change. Our bridal flowers serve for a buried course. And all things, change them to the contrary. Sir, go you in, and madam, go with him, and go Sir Paris. Everyone prepare to follow this fair course unto her grave. The heavens do lower upon you for some ill. Move them no more by crossing their high will. We may put up our pipes and be gone. Honest good fellows are. Put up, put up. For well you know, this is a pitiful case. I by my troth the case may be amended. <gasps> musicians, oh musicians, heart's ease. Heart's ease. Oh, when you will have me live, play heart's ease. Why heart's ease? Oh, musicians, because my heart itself plays, my heart is full. Oh, play me some merry dump. To comfort me. Not a dump wheat. There's no time to play now. You will not then? No. I will then give it you soundly. What will you give us? No money on my faith, but the gleek. I will give you the minstrel. Then will I give you the serving creature. Then will I lay the serving creature's dagger on your pate. I will carry no crotchets. I will ray you. I will far you. Do you note me? And you ray us and far us. You note us. Pray you put up your dagger and put out your wit. 
Then have at you with my wit. I will dry beat you with an iron wit and put up mine iron dagger. Answer me like men. When griping grief the heart doth wound, and doleful dumps the mind oppress, then music with her silver sound. Why silver sound? Why music with her silver sound? What say you, son, Catling? Marry, sir, because silver hath a sweet sound. Pretty. <laughs> What say you, Hugh Rebeck? I say silver sound because musicians sound for silver. <laughs> Pretty too. What say you, James Soundpost? Faith. I know not what to say. <laughs> oh, I cry you mercy. You are the singer. I will say for you. It is music with our silver sound because musicians have no gold for sounding. Then music with our silver sound with speedy help doth lend redress. <laughs> Oh, the pestilent labour's the same. Ah, hang him, Jack. Come. We'll in here tarry for the mourners and stay dinner. If I may trust the flattering truth of sleep, my dreams presage some joyful news at hand. My bosom's lord sits lightly in his throne, and all this day an unaccustomed spirit lifts me above the ground with cheerful thoughts. <laughs> I dreamt my lady came and found me dead. Strange dream that gives a dead man leave to think. And breathes such life with kisses in my lips that I revived and was an emperor. Oh, me, how sweet is love itself possessed when but love's shadows are so rich in joy. News from Verona on Mount Balthazar! Dost thou not bring me letters from the friar? How doth my lady? Is my father well? How doth my lady Juliet? That I ask again, for nothing can be ill if she be well. Then she is well, and nothing can be ill. Her body sleeps in Keppel's monument, and her immortal part with angels lives. I saw her laid low in her kindred's vault, and presently took post to tell it to you. Oh, pardon me for bringing these ill news. <laughs> Since you did leave it for my office, sir. Is it even so? Then I defy you, stars. Thou knowest my lodging, get me ink and paper and hire post horses, I will hence tonight. I do beseech you, sir, have patience. Your looks are pale and wild and do import some misadventure. Tush, thou art deceived. Leave me and do the thing I bid thee do. Hast thou no letters to me from the friar? No, my good lord. No matter, get thee gone and hire those horses. I'll be with thee straight. Well, Julia. I will lie with thee tonight. Let's see for means. Oh, mischief thou art swift to enter in the thoughts of desperate men. I do remember an apothecary, and hereabouts he dwells, which late I noted in tattered weeds with overwhelming brows, culling of simples. Meagre were his looks, sharp misery had worn him to the bones. And in his needy shop a tortoise hung, an alligator stuffed and other skins of ill-shaped fishes. And about his shelves a beggarly account of empty boxes, green earthen pots, bladders and musty seeds, remnants of pack thread and old cakes of roses were thinly scattered to make up a show. Noting this penury to myself, I said, and if a man did need a poison now, who sail his present death in Mantua, here lives a caitiff wretch who would sell it him. Oh, this same thought did but forerun my need, and this same needy man must sell it me. As I remember, this should be the house. Being holiday, the beggar shop is shut. What ho, apothecary! Who calls so loud?
Come hither, man. I see that thou art poor. Oh, there is forty ducats. Let me have a dram of poison. Shh. Such soon speeding gear as will disperse itself through all the veins that the life weary taker may fall dead, and that the trunk may be discharged of breath as violently as hasty powder fire doth hurry from the fatal cannon's womb. Such mortal drugs I have, that mentor as law is death to any he that utters them. Art thou so bare and full of wretchedness and fears to die? Famine is in thy cheeks, need and oppression starveth in thy eyes. Contempt and beggary hangs upon thy back. The world is not thy friend, nor the world's law. The world affords no law to make thee rich. Then be not poor, but break it and take this. My poverty, but not my will, consents. I pay thy poverty and not thy will. in any liquid thing you will and take it off and if you have the strength of 20 men it would dispatch you straight there is thy gold worse poison to men's souls doing more murder in this loathsome world than these poor compounds that thou mayst not sell i sell thee poison thou hast sold me none farewell by food and get thyself in flesh Come, cordial and not poison. Go with me to Juliet's grave, for there must I use thee. Only a Franciscan friar. This saint should be the voice of Friar John. Brother. Welcome from Mantua. What says Romeo? Or if his mind be rich, give me his letter. Going to find a barefoot brother out, one of our order to associate me here in this city, visiting the sick and finding him. The searchers of the town, suspecting that we both were in the house where the infectious pestilence did reign, sealed up the doors and would not let us forth, so that my speed to Mantua there was stayed. Who bear my letter then to Romeo? I could not send it. Here it is again, nor get a messenger to bring it thee. So fearful were they of infection. Unhappy fortune. By my brotherhood, the letter was not nice, but full of charge of dear import, and then neglecting it may do much danger. Uh, Friar John, go hence. Get me an iron crow and bring it straight unto my cell. Brother, I'll go and bring it thee. Now must I to the monument alone. Within this three hour will fair Juliet wake. She will beshrew me much that Romeo hath had no notice of these accidents. But I will ride again to Mantua and keep her at my cell till Romeo come. Poor living corse closed in a dead man's tomb. Give me that torch, boy. The hands and stand aloof. Yet put it out, for I would not be seen. Under yon yew trees lay thee all along, holding thine ear close to the hollow ground, so shall no foot upon the churchyard tread being loose and firm with digging up of graves, but thou shalt hear it. Whistle then to me a signal that thou hearest something approach. Give me those flowers. Do as I bid thee go. I'm almost afraid to stand alone here in the churchyard. Yet I will adventure. Sweet flower, with flowers thy bridal bed I strew. 
Oh, whoa. Thy canopy is dust and stones, which with sweet water nightly I will dew. Or wanting that, with tears distilled by moans. The obsequies that I for thee will keep nightly shall be to strew thy grave and weep. <laughs> <laughs> the boy gives signal something doth approach. What cursed foot wanders this way tonight to cross my obsequies and true love's right? What? With a torch. And muffle me night a while. Give me that mattock and the wrenching iron. Oh, take this letter. Early in the morning, see thou deliver it to my lord and father. Give me the light. Upon thy life I charge thee, whate'er thou hearst or seest, stand all aloof and do not interrupt me in my course. Why I descend unto this bed of death is partly to behold my lady's face, but chiefly to take thence from her dead finger a precious ring, a ring that I must use in dear employment. Therefore, hence be gone. But if thou jealous doth return to pry in what I further shall intend to do, by heaven I will tear thee joint by joint and strew this hungry churchyard with thy limbs. The time and my intents are savage wild, more fierce and more inexorable far than empty tigers or the roaring sea. I will be gone, sir, and not trouble ye. So shalt thou show me friendship. Take thou that. Live and be prosperous. And farewell, good fellow. For all the same, I'll hide me here about. His looks I fear and his intents I doubt. Thou detestable moor, thou womb of death, gorged with the dearest morsel of the earth. Thus I enforce thy rotten jaws to open, and in despite I'll cram thee with more food. This is that banished, haughty Montague that murdered my love's cousin, with which grief it is supposed the fair creature died, and here is come to do some villainous shame to the dead bodies. I will apprehend him. Stop thy unhallowed toil, vile Montague. Vengeance be pursued further than death. Condemn me, villain. I do apprehend thee. A band go with me, for thou must die. I must indeed, and therefore came I hither. Good gentle youth, tempt not a desperate man. Fly hence and leave me. Think upon these gone, let them affright thee. I beseech thee, youth, put not another sin upon my head by urging me to fury. Oh, be gone! By heaven, I love thee better than myself, for I come hither armed against myself. Stay not, be gone. Live, and hereafter say a madman's mercy bid thee run away. I defy thy conjuration. And I apprehend thee for a felon here. Wilt thou provoke me? Then have it thee by! Lord, they fight! I will go call the world! <laughs> Oh, I am slain. If thou be merciful, open the tomb. Lay me with Juliet. In faith I will. Let me peruse this face. But you shows kinsman noble can't in Paris. What said my man when my betosset soul did not attend him as we rode? I think he told me Paris should have married Juliet. <laughs> said he not so, or did I dream it so? Why am I mad hearing him talk of Juliet to think it was so? 
Oh, give me thy hand. One writ with me in Psalm is Fortune's book. I'll bury thee in a triumphant grave. A grave, oh no, a lantern-slaughtered youth. For here lies Juliet, and her beauty makes this vault a feasting presence full of light. death have they been merry, which their keepers call a lightning before death. Oh, how may I call this a lightning? Oh, my love, my wife. Death that has sucked the honey of thy breath hath had no power yet upon thy beauty. Heart not conquered. Beauty's ensign yet is crimson in thy lips and in thy cheeks, and death's pale flag is not advanced there. Tybalt lies thou there in thy bloody sheet. Oh, what more favor can I do to thee than with that hand that cut thy youth in twain to sunder his that was thine enemy? Forgive me, cousin. Ah, oh, dear Juliet, why art thou yet so fair? <laughs> Shall I believe that unsubstantial death is amorous, and that the lean, abhorred monster keeps thee here in dark to be his paramour? For fear of that, I still will stay with thee, and never from this palace of dim night depart again. Here, here will I remain with worms that are thy chambermaids. Oh, here will I set up my everlasting rest and shake the yoke of inauspicious stars from this world wearied flesh. Eyes look your last. Arms take your last embrace. And lips, oh, you're the doors of breath. Seal with a righteous kiss a dateless bargain to engrossing death. Come, bitter conduct. Come, unsavory guide. Thou desperate pilot, now at once run on the dashing rocks, thy seasick, weary bark. Here's to my love. Thy drugs are quick. That's with a kiss. I die. Francis, be my speed. Oh, off tonight. My old feet stumbled at graves. Who's there? Here's one, a friend. Oh, and one that knows you well. Bless me upon you. Tell me, good my friend, what torch is yond that vainly lends its light to grubs and eyeless skulls, as I discern it burneth in the Capel's monument? It doth so, holy sir. And there's my master, one that you love. Who is it? Romeo. How long hath he been there? Full half an hour. Go with me to the vault. I dare not, holy sir. My master knows not that I am gone hence, and fearfully did menace me with death if I did stay and look on his intents. Stay then. I'll go alone. Oh, fear comes upon me. How much I fear some ill unthrifty thing. As I did sleep under this yew tree here, I dreamt my master and another fought, and that my master slew him. Romeo! 
Alack. Alack, what blood is this which stains the stony entrance of this sepulchre? What means these masterless and gory swords to lie discolored by this place of peace? Romeo. Oh, pale. Who else? What Paris too? Steeped in blood. Oh, what an unkind hour is guilty of this lamentable chance. The lady stirs. Oh, comfortable friar. <laughs> where is my lord? I do remember well where I should be, and there I am. Where is my Romeo? I hear some noise. Lady, come from this nest of death, contagion, and unnatural sleep. A greater power than we can contradict hath thwarted our intents. Come, come, away. Thy husband in thy bosom there lies dead. And Paris, too. Come, I dispose of thee among a sisterhood of holy nuns. Stay not to question, for the watch is coming. Come, go, good Juliet. I dare no longer stay. Oh, get thee hence, for I will not away. What's here? A cup closed in my true love's hand. Poison, I see, hath been his timeless end. Oh, chill. Drunk all and left no friendly drop to help me after. I will kiss thy lips. Happily, some poison yet will hang on them to make me die with a restorator. My lips are warm. Which way? Noise, and then I'll be brief. Oh, happy dagger. This is thy sheath. Here, rust, and let me die. This is the place. There, where the torch doth burn. The ground is bloody. Search about the churchyard. Go, some of you, where you find the thatch. A oh, pitiful sight. Here lies the county slain. And Juliet. Bleeding, warm, and newly dead, who here hath lain this two days buried. Go, tell the prince, run to the Capulets, raise up the Montagues, some other search. We see the ground whereon these woes do lie, but the true ground of all these piteous woes we cannot without circumstance describe. It's Romeo's man, we found him in the churchyard. Hold him in safety till the prince come hither. It is a friar, but trembles, sighs, and weeps. We took this mattock and this spade from him as he was coming from this churchyard side. A grave suspicion. Stay the friar, too. What misadventure is so early up that calls our person from our morning rest? What should it be that is so shrieked abroad? Oh, the people in the street cry Romeo, some Juliet, and some Paris, and all run with open outcry toward our monument. What is this fear that startles in our ears? Sovereign, here lies the county Paris, slain. Oh. And Romeo dead. And Juliet, dead before, warm and new killed. Oh. Search, seek, and know how this foul murder comes. There is a friar, and slaughtered Romeo's man with instruments upon them fit to open these dead men's tombs. Oh, heavens, oh, wife, look how our daughter bleeds. This dagger hath me stained, for lo, his house is empty on the back of Montague, and it missheathed in my daughter's bosom. Oh, the sight of death is as a bell that warns my old age to a sepulchre. Come, Montague, for thou art early up to see thy son and heir more early down. Alas, my liege, my wife is dead tonight. Grief at my son's exile had stopped her breath. What new woe conspires against mine age? Look and thou shalt see. O oh, thou, untaught. What manners is in this, to press before thy father to a grave? Seal up the mouth of outrage for a while, till we can clear these ambiguities. 
and know their spring, their head, their true intent. Then will I be general of your woes and lead you even to death. Meantime, forbear and let mischance be slave to patience. Bring forth the parties of suspicion. I am the greatest able to do least, yet most suspected as the time and place doth make against me of this direful murder. And here I stand, both to impeach and purge myself condemned and myself excused. Say at once what thou dost know in this. I will be brief, for my short date of breath is not so long as is a tedious tale. Romeo, their dead, was husband to that Juliet. And she there dead, that Romeo's faithful wife. I married them, and their sole and marriage day was Tybalt's doomsday, whose untimely death banished the new-made bridegroom from this city, for whom, and not for Tybalt, Juliet pined. Now you, to remove that siege of grief from her betrothed, and would have married her perforce to County Paris. Then comes she to me, and with wide looks bid me devise some means to rid her from this second marriage, or in my cell there would she kill herself. Then gave I her, so tutored by my art, a sleeping potion, which so took effect as I intended, for it wrought on her the form of death. Meantime I writ to Romeo that he should hither come on this dire night to help to take her from her borrowed grave, being the time the potion's force should cease. But he which bore my letter, Friar John, was stayed by accident, and yesternight returned my letter back. Then all alone, at the prefixed hour of her waking, came I to take her from her kindred's vault, meaning to keep her closely at my cell, till I conveniently could send to Romeo. But when I came, some minute ere the time of her awakening, here untimely lay the noble Paris, and true Romeo dead. She waked, and I entreated her come forth and bear this work of heaven with patience, but then a noise did scare me from the tomb, and she too desperate would not go with me, but as it seems, did violence on herself. <laughs> All this I know, to the marriage her nurse is privy, and if aught in this miscarried by my fault, let my own life be sacrificed some hour before his time unto the rigor of severest law. We still have known thee for a holy man. Where is Romeo's man? What can he say to this? I brought my master news of Juliet's death, and then in post he came from Mantua to this same place, to this same monument. This letter he early bid me give his father, and threatened me with death going in the vault if I departed not and left him there. Give me the letter, I will look on it. Where is the county's page that roused the watch? Sirrah, what made your master in this place? He came with flowers to strew his lady's grave, and bid me stand aloof, and so I did. Anon comes one with light to open the tomb, and by and by my master drew on him, and then I ran away to call the watch. This letter doth make good the friar's words, their course of love, the tidings of her death. And here he writes that he did buy a poison of a poor pathogeny, and therewithal came to this vault to die and lie with Juliet. Where be these enemies? Capulet, Montague, see what a scourge is laid upon your hate that heaven finds means to kill your joys with love. And I, for winking at your discords too, have lost a brace of kinsmen. All are punished. O oh, brother Montague, give me thy hand. This is my daughter's jointure, for no more can I demand. But I can give thee more, for I will raise her statue in pure gold, that while Verona by that name is known, there shall no figure at such rate be set as that of true and faithful Julia. As rich shall Romeo's by his ladies lie. Poor sacrifices of our enmity. A glooming peace this morning with it brings. The sun for sorrow will not show his head. Go hence to have more talk of these sad things. Some shall be pardoned and some punished. For never was a story of more woe than this of Juliet and her Romeo.